Hold on one second. Get my, my sound together here. How y'all doing, guys? Just waiting on everybody to get on in here so we can chop it up. I'm glad to have y'all tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is another episode of Ask Tariq Nasheed Anything. Anybody got something on your mind that you want to get off with Mr. Nasheed, y'all let me know what's on your mind. Ask me anything, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everybody's having a good week. Um, don't forget my book, Foundation of Black American Race Bait, are available right now at Amazon. So without further ado, let's get these phone lines cracking for those who want to ask me anything while people are coming on in the room. All right. Let's get the new action going on here. The new action, what's on your mind? All right, the new action. Hi, um, Tariq. Um, yes. It's uh, a fan of your work and stuff. I um, hear what you say about FBA. I'm based in London. Um, I've seen what's going on in the Ukraine and um, heard your thoughts. But um, I say it, you, you say it doesn't affect you a lot and stuff like that. But the anti-black racism, you know, is, is a big thing. Um, don't you think um, we should, everyone should talk about that, that is black or has black um, connection to black people? Absolutely. That absolutely. And I talked about that the other day. What's going on over there, the anti-black racism aspect, that's something significant because what they are, they're going to do, they're going to start sending some of those um, Ukrainian refugees over here. So now we're going to start getting some of them hardcore white supremacists over here, and we ain't, we're not going to be playing games with them like that. So, yeah, we're keeping an eye out on this situation very seriously. Um, Bridget, is that your name, ma'am? Bridget? Bridget? It's, Bri it's Brigetta. Brigetta. How are you, Brigetta? Um, I'm fine. How are you? I am good, Brigetta. Now, where are you from, ma'am? I'm from Akron, Ohio, but I live in Long Beach right now. Okay, you're out here in California, Brigetta. Now, Brigetta, what do you mix with? Are you Creole? What do you mix with? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Creole. Oh, okay. Your family from New Orleans? They're from Lake Charles. Lake Charles, okay. All right. So what's on your mind, Brigetta? Um, I just wanted to say that I do believe that um, I honestly don't believe the whole scenario that's going on with the Ukraine and Russia. Um, I think that Biden is actually trying to pick up his numbers because he knows he's way down there. And also I do believe like when they left all, they let all the Afghans come over here with the Afghanistan debacle. I believe that they ultimately want to start bringing the Ukrainians over here as well. They keep talking about all these refugees um, and, uh, I don't really, well, I consider myself a F, I don't really consider myself a FBA, but I am FBA according yeah. to your definition. Yeah. If your family, you came from enslaved father, black people. He's black. You're what? Right. Right. Uh, my father's yeah. black. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out there in Lake Charles. Yeah. You're FBA. You're foundational black American. <laughs> of yeah. course. Yeah. But I, I like the way that, uh, not to talk about another YouTube channel, but I like the way that Dane Calloway talks about us being indigenous people, not mm -hmm. Native American, but indigenous people. Right. My grandmother um, used to, and my aunts and stuff, used to talk a lot about us being, uh, well, they would say, you know, Indian. So I knew exactly what they were talking about. And then I have a cousin down in... Um, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, that talks about how our family was was Creek Indian, right, right. So, um, I just like the way that Dane Calloway kind of breaks it down. And one one more point I wanted to make was I did watch Professor Black Truth today, mm -hmm. and I tried to. Uh, he was talking about Ukraine and how. Putin said that the Ukrainians are, are racist. They're all racist. And that wasn't really the point. I was sending out the video because I wanted people to watch it. 
Mm-hmm. And a lot of responses, well, you know, Putin's racist too. And I was like, that's not the point. I sent you the video because I want you to watch it. And uh, I had a couple of people say that it was blocked. And I said, see, they, they got, he's showing you something that they don't want you to see. Mm. Mm. It's heavy. It's heavy talk. But thank you so much, Brigitte. Thank uh, you so much. All right. You- all right, let's get Miss B. <laughs> What's up, Miss B? Oh, hi. Hello to everybody. Welcome hey. to the host, Tariq Nasheed. How are you, Miss B? I am well. Um, finally catching one of your Twitter spaces live, but I really appreciate everything that you're contributing to this conversation and that you're setting the tone on. Um, yes, ma'am. I will say that, you know, due to the fact of um, my family dynamic, uh, both my parents are foundational Black Americans, and mm-hmm. um, make no mistake that we are uh, very well aware of how deep our roots run here on this land. Um, yes. But I will say that one thing that I have noticed in a lot of these conversations with our um, <laughs> fellow human beings that are within the diaspora it just right. it's really been eye opening and it's fortunate yeah. because um i do have some family members that are married into um african families and caribbean families right. um okay. and one thing i will say is that we um specifically with the caribbeans Um, that I have family members that are married into Caribbean families. Um, Very misinformed, very misinformed about who we are, our history, what they think they know. Um, And I have been checking and correcting that for quite some time, since I I would probably have to say in my teenage years. So, Mm. um, you know, and it, let me let me build on that for a second. Thank you for the call, beloved. Yeah, a lot of them are not really misinformed. A lot of people come and play dumb when it comes to our lineage and who we are and our culture. As they play dumb, so they can use that as an excuse to disrespect. So that's why we've been checking a lot of these folks. That's why checking them is very important. And because people haven't been checked for their years of disrespect, they they try to flip it as they're they're being attacked. It's a typical gaslighting type of thing. Kareem, what's up, brother? Hop on, man. How's it going, my brother? How you doing tonight? I'm good, Kareem. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. So I had a question for you. Yes. Um, just to give you a little background, both of my parents are African. Uh, I was born abroad, and I came here when I was younger. I was raised in Philly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah your family from Senegal? C- Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, both of them. So okay. My question is, and my uncle, I'm pretty sure you know who my uncle is, is Dr. Umar, Umar Johnson. Oh, oh that's your uncle? Yes, yeah, my uncle. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah, so, you know, we, we build and we have these conversations, you know, usually. <clears throat> my question is, why are we as uh, people of color, the FBAs and the African uh, individuals, all now in uproar when we should be folks in? on our development and uh, and uh, going against the forces as like imperialism and, and the forces that, that provide that provoke us and uh, uh, that does not allow us to provide or advance in society instead of we are now arguing amongst each other whether you have African lineage or not why are we now and I understand uh, I've been educating myself on how you know African individuals and the Caribbean individuals can um how should I say, uh, deter reparations? All right, let me let me answer that. Yeah. And the reason why, because a lot of y'all are not trying to fight white supremacy or imperialism. A lot of non-FBA people, let's keep it a buck, a lot of non-FBA people collectively, and I'm not talking about certain just individual groups, but collectively, a lot of non-FBA people aren't trying to fight imperialism nor white supremacy. They're just not. And when they come over here, they're not trying to fight it either. And not only are they not trying to fight it, they're trying to undermine us when we fight it. 
And that's why we have to stop and say, well, damn, we got to see who's with us and who's against us right now. We got to take a damn tally. That's why we can't move forward, because when we, foundational black Americans who consistently fight white supremacy, we look around and see who's trying to be our allies. And just because people look like us don't mean that they're fighting like us. And that's a major problem, because when it comes to dealing with white supremacy, the reason the white supremacists have always gotten over, not, not because they were stronger, they've always pitted groups against each other. We've always been infiltrated by people among us who are supposed to be fighting these white supremacists. That's why we keep losing over in Africa. The reason why there was so much turmoil is because there was infighting with all of these multi different tribes. And then the white supremacists came in and infiltrated that. The reason why black folks got caught up over here especially with the Yamasee Wars and all of that, it was those red Native Americans who we wanted to be allies who were helping the white supremacists against us. The reason why we keep getting caught up in these situations is one group is fighting white supremacy and there's another group infiltrating the group trying to fight white supremacy. So it is mandatory that we stop, look and see who's really with us. Let's see who's on team empowerment. And a lot of the people from the diaspora are really not on that. That's something that we have to acknowledge. And then when we call them out, it becomes, hey, brother, we all have to fight the white man. We ain't doing that temporary, let's fight the white man talk. And then when we put on our boots to fight the white supremacists, you telling them where we going to meet up. You, you know what I'm saying? Then we got the, we, we got the we got the Candace Owens and the, the just all of the other sambos who come over here. Now we already got a problem with domestic sambos. But they're coons. They're coons. That's what I'm so, saying. But can and we the problem agree? and the problem the problem with the coons are domestic coons. We as foundational Black Americans we identify ours and we let everybody know who they are. So we and ultimately making them ineffective. Like Jesse Lee Peterson is ineffective. Larry Elder is ineffective among us. We already know who he is. We see where he's going. We see what his get down is. Diamond and Silk. We make them pariahs within our community to the point where they become punchlines. The problem is y'all don't do that with your Sambos. You, you don't tell us who the Sambos are in your community. So they just come around us and post up. They just post up around you all and y'all don't say nothing. You understand? And that's why y'all get undermined because nobody's saying nothing. So we're saying something. We're saying, hey, some of these folks coming among us who ain't really with us, they're going to have to get away from us. And it ain't about, no, we all the same brother and all that. No, 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 no. If you're trying to undermine us while we're fighting white supremacy, you are not my brother nor my sister. But thank you for the call, sir. That's how we got to be with it. We can't keep getting undermined out here. It is real. Who is this person here? Sea Storm. Let's get Sea Storm in here. All right, and then we'll get Big Gambino next. Oh no, he got some weird stuff on his page. All right, Sea Storm, or Sean Storm, or whatever your name is. I ain't got my glasses on, and I can't see for shit. Sean Storm, is that your name? Yes. Hey, what's up, Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's up with you? I'm all right. I'm uh, I I'm happy I got a chance to talk to you, man. I uh, yes. I, um, there was a, um, you know, when this whole situation started, I was kind of real confused that people were confused about what you were saying. I don't understand how people didn't understand the message. It was real confusing to me. But uh, with the Twitter spaces and all that, when I went onto those spaces, I was kind of real confused because people were saying all kind of crazy shit about you. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not from here. I'm, I'm from the Caribbean also. But... Right. It was just confusing right. how the message just turned into something totally different. Like, I heard lineage, I, lineage, I got it. But for some reason, you know, the message just switched into something else. It was crazy. But I, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. that was, that was deliberate because they couldn't deal with what we were talking about, which is their anti FBA hatred that goes on. So they had to flip it and pretend that they were being attacked. So it was all a, a big fronting type of thing. But anyway, Nazir, turn your microphone on, sir. Let's get Nazir on here. 
Nazir. Nazir. Nazir, you can turn your microphone on. Hey, Tariq. Hey, Nazir, how are you? Sir? Hey, everything is going well. Um, I just want to say uh, I've been following you for a little while, and you're doing a great job. And uh, just keep Thank up the good work. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Shout out to Nazir. And let's get Big Gambino in here. Big Gambino, what's going on with you? Hello, can you hear me, bro? What's up, Big Gambino? What's up, bro? Yeah, uh, all right. So uh, I am FBA. Uh, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I grew up in the Marks Village Projects, like currently in the DMV, so I am FBA. Right, so yeah. Uh, my only question is right because I'm like a, a thought provoking type person. I like to like l- view things from the both sides of the coin. My thing is right. like, so like with Candace, like I know you speak about Candace Owens a lot. Like, do you think that her op- opinion is like, do you think she's an enemy or like is her like, or do you just disagree with her on a level to where you think that like? It's necessary, but you just don't agree with her. I think, I, like, I'm, I don't know what I'm saying that. One. <laughs> but yeah, like, do you like just disagree with her, or do you think that what she's saying is unwarranted? Who, do somebody who sits with white supremacists and justifies the murder of black people with that? What else besides an enemy would that be? Um. Yeah, I mean, let's keep it a buck. Yeah. She sits up here and she justifies the murder of Breonna Taylor. She justifies the murder of George Floyd. I mean, she was out there banging at that drum real heavy, talking about he he had overdosed on drugs and he was this and that. Is is that not an enemy? Well, see, yeah, like so. All right, so I don't want to say like, I'm like necessarily agreeing with everything that she said, but it's like, do you agree that these people should be painted as like heroes? Like, I understand that they are they fallen victims of white supremacy. But should they be campaigned as like heroes? You get what I'm saying? They shouldn't have been killed like that. No, nah, I agree matters. with that. Yeah, that I, I'm not focusing on no damn hero stuff. That's the wrong thing to focus on. The per the focus is that they got killed unjustly by suspected white supremacists, and if we let that happen, that incentivizes other white supremacists. You understand how that works? Yeah, not nah, like not nah, like I I hundred percent I hundred percent agree with so that, that, right? Yeah, I do. Like, like allowing that to happen and trying to normalize it and make excuses for it, that puts targets on all of our backs. When you do that, when you sit there and justify the unjust murder of a black person, you're putting a damn bullseye on the heads of all of us. Is that cool? Nah, like. It, like nah like that's not cool at all like and that that right. like I really was like I know like she said a lot of like stupid shit like thank you so much sir all right well, you do just kind of trying to be contrary just for the sake of being contrary and no we're not doing that okay fluorescent amphibian now, I've had you on here before fluorescent amphibian what's up fluorescent amphibian Fluorescent amphibian. I've had you on here before. What's going on, fluorescent amphibian? All right. You can turn your microphone on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, an important issue that I never hear it get talked about is that. Man, dude, whatever microphone, take take the Bluetooth off, man. Um, I never hear about um, the collusion and the um, and the formation of a union between white supremacists and Jews. Um, back in the days, Albert Einstein was uh, very outspoken about um, white people and their and their racism, and he thought it was a disease. Solely, solely um, expressed by by white people. Now, as as Jews have now evolved, some Jews, some Jews have now evolved to get in bed with the white supremacist. Uh, and I, I, I've always wondered why you never made that point. So what, what, 
Okay, what does that have to do with systematic white supremacy of the religion of the people? Um, because you, there's, you know, a silent majority of, of Jews who are in bed with them. And I think, I think we need to have some, okay. a little nuance in terms of um, um, Jews playing a part in this too. Why? Because a white supremacist is a white supremacist. Their religious background means absolutely nothing. It's inconsequential. Well, President Trump signs an executive order making them um, a, a race and a religion. They're not a race and a religion. No, I'm sir. not saying they are. I'm just saying They're that's not. what Trump is trying to make them. So, okay, well, okay. How, how does how does that how does an executive order make a group a race? What, what are you talking well, about? Well, Trump signed an executive order. There, there was a massive movement across universities to boycott and divest from Israel. Trump. Trump okay, in Israel, in Israel, you have a bunch of Ethiopian Jews who are saying that they're facing brutal white supremacy. Okay. So what's all of this other talk about? You've got black people over in Israel complaining about white supremacy in Israel today. Turn your microphone on. I think I think Jews have been facilitating a lot of this, you know, from the Ben Shapiro's to the um, to his um, his little dark his dark web um, boys down to Joe Rogan who want to um, analyze uh, eugenics. Joe Rogan isn't Jewish. I know he's not Jewish, but what? he, you know, he and. Gavin Gavin McInnes is not Jewish. The leader of the Proud Boys, he's not Jewish, and the Proud Boys is a white supremacist group. Right. I tell him. Richard Richard Spencer isn't Jewish. A lot of the heads of these police unions aren't Jewish, and they're running white supremacist units out here in Los Angeles. You got white supremacist gangs within law enforcement who control our lives. Mm. They have a green card. They have a green light to harm us. They're not Jewish. So what are you talking about? I'm talking about that Jews and African Americans had some camaraderie and kinsmanship towards each other. Okay, you're not addressing what I'm saying. I just made some some points and you're just babbling about Jews. You're just babbling. You're not even making any sense. It's not even when when I point out the contradictions, you just keep babbling. Yeah. Okay, you, you keep interrupting me. You're just babbling, sir. You're not even addressing what I'm saying. You're just uh, okay, babbling. Okay, what exactly are you you're saying that we should just focus on white supremacy? Okay, let's get some more. This is the time-wasting tether. Okay. Watch out for time-wasting tethers, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out for them. Okay, let's get anonymous dude on here. Okay, watch out for them time wasting tethers, just babbling mindlessly, nonsensical. Um, anonymous. Anonymous, turn your microphone on. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Now what's going on? What's your name? Uh it's the governor. The governor. Where where are you from? Uh I mean Somali. Okay, you're not in Somali. Where are you from? Like currently, uh, the U.S. The U.S., all right. Now, where are you from for real? You're not a Somali. Yeah, I'm from Somalia. Yeah. You're not from Somali. Where are you from? Uh, well, because I don't have the accent. It's, you know, I was raised here. You're not Somalian. You're not Somalian. Where are you from? I know what a Somalian sounds like, and you're not one. Are you a white dude? You sound like a white dude. Nah, bro, I'm not. Okay. Uh, All right. So, what's on your mind? what's on your mind, bro? The question is, why aren't Africans and Black Americans, uh, you know, more united, more like if you look at NATO, it's basically pan-Europeanism. So, you know, if African Americans rely on themselves, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a weak group. But you know, with the unification of Africans, it's gonna be a strong uh, superpower. You understand what I'm saying? It's gonna be a strong group here. 
Okay. Well, why are you Europeans all together right now? Is there's a war in Europe right now? People have differences. At least we're not warring with other African people. We're on code enough to not be cutting each other's throats on a global scale. So look at what's happening in the Ukraine and Russia right now. Exactly. That's none of our business. Let them let them go to war. Especially, I mean, I'd say Russia's in the right because they are defending their territory, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, Africans and Foundation of Black Americans, we ain't going at it like that. We have a few disagreements, but there's no war. We ain't killing each other like that yeah but whenever africans you know come on your uh podcast what a space to uh talk about like uh being more of uh you know teammates you basically throw out useless insults that africans That's and then africans okay okay you're not gonna lie let's stop lying because anytime an african person wants to build with us we're down with them anytime let's not lie do not lie do not lie. If there's African people who want to build with us, we're all open arms with them. The ones we clown are the ones who try to insult us. We don't play that game. So do not come in here with a false narrative because you just told something that you told a lie and you knew it was a lie when you told it. So those are bad faith arguments. Okay, okay. Don't do that. All right. Any, all right. Anyways, yeah, same. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is... Uh, I support a Pan-Africanist thinking, you understand me? Basically, anybody that has the same skin color, which is black, should be uh, promoting black nationalism, you know, that kind of thought process. Uh, A thought process of, like, self-reliance, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, to the point that... But you're not black, though. So Who said I wasn't black, bro? I just said I was. You're not black, man. I just said I was from Somalia, Mukhadish of Somali Wakuhalikara, Hakalosa, Wakusheg of Somali Wakuhalikara, and here Somali Kurdish. You ain't number the Saudi Arabian dude, stop. That's not Arabic. Arabic and Somali, two different languages. That sounds like what I, some I heard it about. Tarikh, Hada of Somali Kuhalai, Alimi Fehmis, so of Ingrisa Kuhaloya. Do you understand me? This is me talking in English and Somali. Okay. Okay. Sounds like you asked me how much does a boat era. No, 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 no. What I said was if I talk in Somali, you're not going to understand me. That's what I just said in Somali. Anyways. Okay. So, okay. So I speak a bit Arabic too. Yeah, you just have, you just, you, your, your, your English voice sounds different, but you, yeah, so you're well, from Somali. So you're Somali. Now, are you, exactly. you're here in the U.S. now, right? Right, right. I mean, I practically was raised here. That's what the uh, American accent is. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Y'all Somalis, you guys aren't really trying to build with us, man. Y'all not trying to. How come you guys are not really trying to build with us? How many Somalis were in the protest of George Floyd supporting the blacks? Exactly. Just because a few Somalis troll. Hold on, hold on. Don't Just because a few Somalis troll you doesn't mean we're not supporting black people. We support anybody that looks like us. Dude, a lot of those Somalis were out there protesting for themselves because that whole Black Lives Matter protest turned into a pro-immigration rally. It turned into a pro-LGBT rally. So, yeah, they were protesting for themselves because that whole protest became a finesse for other groups. Other groups start getting better. I exactly. I agree with you. Also, out there in Minnesota, it was some of them damn Somalis that was burning down black schools out there, too. Let's talk about that. They were out there burning down black schools. Yes, they were. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were out there doing little slick stuff. Okay, so hold on. Go- I'm, I'm, I agree with you. The, uh, the point you made about Black Lives Matter completely being corrupted, and now it's like a protest for the Jews, the Rainbow Club, and every other goofy organization i agree with that it's because they get funded what happens is the leaders of these black lives organizations get funded by these jews and all of a sudden their organization that was supposed to be you know uh uplifting and helping out black communities turns into an absolute scam yeah exactly i agree with that but But let's not lie here no 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 
y'all, y'all are in on the scam. Y'all not complaining. How about the hell are we in on the scam? How the hell are because you're because because you benefit from the immigration rhetoric. That's how you're in on it. Yeah, you benefit. That's why you guys are out there protesting and going along with the program. Don't sit here pointing fingers, talking about the Jews, this and all of the these deflections. And you guys were benefiting from the scam too. You understand? Y'all were benefiting from the scam. No, nah, man. If someone says reparations are, you know, allowed, I wouldn't take them because obviously I'm not an FBA, but obviously, you know, the ones whose ancestors were linked directly to slavery, those are the ones who deserve reparations and 40 acres and a mule. Somalians are basically agreeing with you. I don't understand it. Just because you have a few trolls doesn't mean that's all, you know, our thought process. Well, it ain't a few trolls, man. It's a, a lot of people uh, from over there. They ain't really rocking like that. Just showing up to a protest again, that ain't, that's whatever. But y'all really are not trying to build. You come over and you guys corner Tariq, yourself in your own community. You, think you do your own thing. Tariq, we don't if, complain. We don't complain, but then you're not going to insult. You know, that's not okay. going to happen. Tariq, I would <laughs> even argue that the true religion of the black is Islam. You guys should be more like the nation of Islam. They're more organized. They have better prophets. They're basically in line with the black thinking. Thanks, sir. To Dr. Max. Okay, sir. The problem is this. You got way too much advice for foundational black Americans, and your homeland is shot to hell, sir. Why aren't you applying all of this to your homeland? It's slowly getting better. What do you mean? I've been there. And I've been there. It's slowly getting better. It's, it's okay. not like chaos. It's not complete chaos. Dude, yeah, people are falling out in the streets from starvation, sir. It's okay. bad. Just all, of this you advice, all of this advice you need to be utilizing in your homeland. We're going to be foundational black Americans. Dude, we got this, brother. We're going to be all right. We're going to uh, be fine. You look at the Jew media, they show us starving. That's not true. Nobody's no, starving stop, left and right. Stop, man. You guys are. It ain't got nothing to do nope. with the Jew media, none of that. Don't, don't blame the Jewish people. People over there starving. How many That's African countries you've been to? How many I've countries, been, Middle yeah. East or African? Bull crap. You haven't not, been to shit, man. Not, not I've been to five. Stop. They're all, they look great. Stop. Because now you're babbling and you're trying to troll your way out of it. People are starving over there and y'all strung out on that damn cat drug. Come on now. You really need to get it together back home, brother. Now, nah, now you're trolling. Now you're just trolling because you've no. never been where you've been. Where you've been? Go ahead and name them. Where you've been, sir? I've you've been, been all, nowhere. I've been all over the world, sir. I've been to five different countries. Natural food. You, uh, it's you clean. Are Johnny, just five countries. You a Johnny come lately? What are you talking you are, about? Five five countries ain't shit, dude. Five? I've been all over the world, dude. Yeah, all, all over what? Western countries? That doesn't count. I'm talking about African or Middle Eastern countries. I've been all over there. I was just over there in Dubai not too long ago. I've been to all of them, sir. Who you think you're talking to? You are Johnny come lately. You're talking about five countries. Dude, I've been to every continent on the planet except Antarctica. I've been there, done that. You are you new booty, as we say. You ain't saying nothing that we haven't done. That's the problem with you guys. Y'all come over here with the, this little weak flexing y'all try to do. But you ain't doing nothing we ain't done. You, you can't tell me where I've been. You can Stop. YouTube my stuff and see where I've been, dude. I've been all over East Africa. I've been to Ethiopia, Egypt, um, um, Zanzibar, Tanzania, South Africa, all over the place. Dude. I've been there. I've seen the things with my own eyes. Tariq, and, you're getting fucked over by America. It's time for your people to actually stand up and do something. Stop. Like, you got it going on in your homeland. You're getting screwed over by the Again. white premises in your homeland. Nah, slow improvement, slow improvement. No, you're slow you're improvement, to... nothing. You're slow starvation. Stop. <laughs> you slow starving and, and slow chewing on that cat hey. out there. Okay, Stop. listen. 
Stop. Dude, what are your protests gonna do? What are your protests gonna do? You guys are getting shot left and right, and you ain't doing shit. Stop. You hold signs. You hold Stop. signs. You walk around. You, nothing's it. been changed. Stop it, sir. Th- those are your people out there holding the signs. Black folks put in work out here. There's a brother out there in Minnesota who ran up in the police station shooting it up the other day, sir. Y- y- y'all don't have a Micah Johnson out here, sir. Y'all don't have a Gavin. Y'all don't, y'all don't have that. Y'all don't. I'm have saying that. you guys need a stronger stop, leader stop, like a Malcolm stop, X or a Fred. Stop, stop, sir. You need to lead your own people instead of fleeing. You can't say nothing about people getting shot like immigrants don't get shot too. Y'all like y'all don't come over like both them. John didn't get shot. Who's an immigrant? Y'all come over here and get shot too, and then look to us to help you. Stop it. Y'all come There's over no here. way we're getting shot left yes, and right. What are you yes, talking you about? Yeah, immigrants do come over here and get shot, dude. Tariq, your immigrants people, while we value education. No, 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 no. Listen here. Okay, Nigeria. Uh, wait, wait, we'll get on that education lie in a minute. But y'all come over here. Immigrants come over here and get shot, too. There was a Jamaican immigrant who went to a, a hunting gathering with some white people not too long ago in Pennsylvania. He got shot. The infamous case out there with the the African immigrant in New York who got a plunger stuck up his rectum. He got abused by the race soldiers. Both them, John. So many different people. Akai Gurley, who got killed by Peter Liang. He was an immigrant. He comes from an immigrant background. So don't sit here and act like you guys have some type of neutrality here where the bullets ain't getting you you getting hit by them bullets too and then you look the foundation of black americans to put in the work because when you get shot you're just gonna put on your burka and eat some damn injera and hold your black lives matter sign until we show up what up bro it's because you guys don't run the law enforcement who runs it the whites do we you guys time for you guys they they run the planet and they run your homeland and they ran you out of it that's why you fled sir they run your homeland, too. The white supremacists run the planet. That's why you're here. Who you hey. guys vote for? Democrats? What are Democrats going to do? Okay. You're holding sands. Sing- oh, sir, you're a fleer. You're talking about what the, what the white supremacists run, and you ran that ass right over here. Why did you run, I sir? can easily go back. I can easily go back. But you can easily lie because you ain't about to go back. You didn't hit the lottery coming over here. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to stay over here hiding behind foundational black Americans for protection. You ain't going back to your homeland, sir, at what all. protection? What are you talking about? I've been there easily. I can easily go back and I can easily come you, here. You're That's not easy. going nowhere. You're going to stay right over here. You guys here. are trapped. You guys are trapped. Dude, you're going to stay your ass right here driving that Uber car, enjoying all of the good things that Foundation of Black Americans paved the way for, sir. You're not going back home. Tariq, it's time for you guys to take over America. Why are you still on your ass? So, and you're sitting next to us on your ass, but your ass got flies and must. So we're almost twins besides the must. It's time to stop voting Democrat. You keep voting Democrat, they're going to keep screwing you over. Dude, time you, to start your you own are, independent party. And you, want to be, independent. And, and you are basically, you one of these black people from Somalia. You're over here using these right-wing, alt-right talking points because they've tricked you into believing that you're a dark Caucasian. You put Caucasian on your paperwork, don't you? Hell no, I got nothing in common with those things. Dude, listen here, let me explain to you something. Let me explain to you something. Okay, hold on. You're using right wing talking points. You sound like the alt right. You voted for Trump, didn't you? Why the hell would I vote for someone who's against Islam? So, why are you using right wing talking points? Okay, Tarek, let me explain to you something simple, right? If the government were to shut down, which type of group would survive? You think blacks would survive? You think liberals would survive? The conservatives would survive. So it's time to start building your own nation. It's time to start hunting, farming, you know, building shit. It's time to start learning that shit. Coming from somebody who fled? How'd that work? Tell me more about the building. Okay. 
tell me how you've built your country, sir. You're telling me about building, and y'all have shanty towns, rats, and flies in your homeland, but you're telling me about building. Tell me more, sir. Tell me more. Tell me more about this building. You ever been there? You're talking like you've been there. Tell me more about... Oh, are you about to tell lots me Lots of infrastructure being built oh, left and right. Lots God. of infrastructure, new roads being built, lots of new businesses. And oh, God. It's not What the, are you guys... You guys are focusing the, on rapping. What's rapping going to help you with? I'm just telling the truth. Sir, are you trying to tell us that there's a secret Wakanda over there in Somalia right now? Are you do, are you really doing the secret? It's really Wakanda. It's the media lying about all the hungry people. You have been to Nigeria? Around. Nigeria is a nice country. Okay, your your homeland ain't nice. It's a nice country as well. Your your homeland ain't nice. Sir. It, no, Stop with the Wakanda. Yeah, Somalia is pretty nice. Then why the hell did you leave? Education. That's it. What it here, here's so, what we do. Here's so what we nice. do. Listen if here. If it was so nice, how come you didn't have an education system there, sir? If it was so nice. Here's what many Africans do, right? They come to Western countries, they learn, they get a good education, they go back and improve their own. How come if your homeland is so nice, how come there's not a nice educational structure there? There is, but you got to seek better knowledge. That's why oh, you go out to the uh, country. Okay. Exactly. So, Listen. Okay, it's not there. It's not there because what you just said is a contradiction. You left because it's not there. The no, it's good. It's not there. It's not good because you left. You don't leave a good system. Here, Foundational Black Americans, we made sure that we're going to have a good system here. That's why we don't leave. Uh, who's your Who's your representative now? Cardi B, Megan the Stallion. Is that it? It's Cardi time B to start getting real here. Cardi B is an immigrant, sir. Where, where's a leader like Malcolm X or Fred Hampton? I don't see those anymore. Who's the leader of Somalia that's worldwide and world respected? Name one. In one Il Ilhan Omar is doing pretty good. Ilhan Omar is doing good. Don't, if you don't stop, it, it, Ilhan it's Omar, true. Ilhan Jesus. Omar is he had to come over here to get props and. Don't nobody really think about no Ilan Omar. Uh, yeah, I think she no. does. No, they don't. Nobody. Where's your leader? Where's your leader, no, Tariq? Nobody. Ilan Omar. Obama. Obama's your Ilan, leader. No, he's a foreigner too. Ilan Omar. What did, what did Obama do for you guys? Ilan Omar is up there with a white man. Ain't nobody thinking about her. She's not the leader of nobody. Nobody's thinking about her. She just has a good job, thanks to Foundation of Black Americans putting her in office. Sir, stop it. What leader do you have? Y'all have to come over here to come up. You see how that works? Y'all got to come here to come up. Y'all got to come among us. Even Obama. He's kin to It's not Foundation of Black America. Notice y'all always got to come around us to come up. Tariq, how, our nation how, is strong. You no, guys have no, no national. No, no, no. Sir, the smell is strong. That's the only thing that's strong. The smell is strong. We as foundational black Americans are the only true culture that's really significant globally. If you want to be real, sir. You can keep talking shit, but you guys are fighting over colors, blue and red. That's ridiculous. Sir, your stereotypes are outdated. There are no cripping blood battles like that no more. Those are... You're using old white supremacist 1980 stereotypes. The Crips and Bloods don't even get down like that no more, sir. You're this is how out of touch you are with real culture. Now, I'm just trying to help you out. You guys are my people, so I'm trying to help. Sir, anybody who fled from their homeland cannot help me, sir. You couldn't even help yourself. You got people over there with their stomachs sticking out and flies on them. You can't do anything for me. The, the Jew media tell you that? So the, the Jew media told you that? No, no. The fly came over and told me that. The fly just told me where they came from, and they said was no food, so they had to fly away. No media told me nothing, sir. And you told me that, too, because you fled. The fact that you here is telling me that, too. Turn your microphone on, sir, or did your prepaid minutes run out?
Yeah, pretty funny. What are you doing so far, huh? Besides writing dumb books like Breaking Best Something. Best selling books, sir. What I'm not doing is fleeing. I'm staying on my ancestral homeland that my ancestors built, sir. And I'm respecting them by keeping up their honor and not running like a punk. That's what I'm doing. Or why don't you do a public public speech then? You afraid you're gonna get got or something? I do public speeches all the time, sir. I'm on elected. YouTube? Sorry. You can go look up videos. I've done speeches at Yale University, all types of places. I've had conferences, sold out lectures all over this country and all over the world. Tariq, your nation is weak. Your nation is weak. It's time to get stronger. Sir, you're projecting. You had to flee to my nation because your nation has collapsed, sir. Because of your failed mentality, you are not at liberty to give anybody any type of advice on nation building. I um, would recommend outcasting all of the degenerates if you guys truly want to. And that starts with you. That starts with a lot of you people from the tether class of your community that messed up everything. Mm -hmm. land. That's, then you that's come, a lie. And then you want to come over here with that same mentality and try to uh, undermine. Us, sir. That, Africans that always look out for each other. You are at what did you say? Africans are looking out for each other. Exactly. All always, always looking out. Africans always look out for each other. You are like, an African like, too. Like, like the T gray, like all of that going on. Are they looking out for each other over there? What they have is a dumb president over there. Oh you, Lord, oh God, it's the government. Oh God, here's the government talk. Are we about to do the government talk, sir? No, it's the truth. What they have is a uh, a weak president who's been uh, propagandized by the West. That's what's happening. That's why he's starving his own people. Anybody who starves their own people is not a true leader. That's what Obama did to you guys. So what are you going to do about that, Tariq? Why do you keep voting for these weak elected yep. people? to run you guys and rule you guys oh it's the government the government the government god i, I knew the government was hey hey listen Tariq, 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 Tariq. yes sir the nation of islam the nation of islam is what you guys should be looking towards now louis farcon now that's a strong leader that's who you guys should be looking up to so I what is it with the these I have, degenerates I love the minister respect the minister so much yes i do I, yes, I do. But you, sir, you you have to get it together in your homeland. You got to. No, no. Ours is, like I said, ours is important. No, it's you not. can throw no, it's out not. all those little dumb flea jokes no, you want, not. but you've never no, been it's there. not, sir. And, that's, and, why, that's why you're eating GMO. You're eating GMO foods where all, all foods are natural. You're a weak <laughs> country. Sir, you're eating GMO too. And GMO stands for goat milk and ostrich eggs. Okay. So you're out there starving trying to cipher goat milk and ostrich eggs and you're trying to sit up here and talk about foundation of black americans you're just not at liberty to do that sir clearly you have no knowledge of history sir, if you think ostriches my, live in africa um, sir that my, my dude said y'all don't even have a running government over there in somalia right now my dude just told me y'all don't even have a running government right now dude it's just chaos it's a free fall over there right now sir don't sit here lying and trying to make yourself feel Tariq. better. Sir, y'all don't even have a functioning government right now. It's all to hell over there, right? Sir. Tariq, black population has been 39 million and it's only 49 or 41 million in 2020. Your your nation is getting destroyed by the Democrats. Okay. These, and you, you allow that. You allow that. Sir, you're just spewing goofy talk. Those are talking points. That's not even real talk right there. That's, that's a deflection to, to deflect away from your country not having a functioning government. People out there strung out on cat and people are doing everything they can to flee. And you got the nerve to sit here and try to give us some damn advice? Really? The FBA is weak without Africa. Sir, Just understand how? that. 
First of all, if you look at every single European country, they're all allied. FBI, I mean, FBA. If you guys want to stand together, you're going to be weak forever. Sir, so we better rely on sir, Africa. We've been holding it down by ourselves for the last 400 years. What are you doing to help What have us? you accomplished, huh? 400 Four, years. What have you accomplished? Sir, you got a puppet as a president. Congratulations. Sir, you got a puppet as a president who didn't do nothing for you. How about that? Sir, foundational black Americans have done for ourselves because we understand we are all we got. And we created a system that you can flee to, sir, and that you can. I respect that. Listen, I respect that. But you guys will never have political power until you guys actually start your own political party. You guys keep relying on the two systems. You'll never have political power. And if you were a person who came from a successful system. I would take that advice, but you come from a system that failed so bad you had to flee. So you're not at liberty listen, to tell us at what least system we, listen, you want to, to run good. At least we elect our own leaders. You and guys look can't at how elect everything your own is leader. going, sir. Look how everything is going. You have no functioning government in your homeland, sir. And who told you that again? No, sir, stop it. Y'all do Fox not News, a, you've been watching Fox, Fox News, is that it? You don't have a functioning government, sir. The government works fine. Just a bit improvements could be made. But other than that, it's pretty good over there. Sir, you guys still have pirates in your homeland, sir. Listen, about the pirates, hey, oh, I mean, I'm all for that. them. There's, they stop. Listen, what happens is you have these yachts stealing our fish. The pirates are fighting for the people. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Sir. The fact that y'all have to rely on some damn pirates like it's 1532 no, no, shows no, listen. that you ain't got it popping. You are depending the, on raggedy pirates to guard no, the damn no, no. sea, and you're trying to give us advice, we don't sir. Depend. Listen here, kid. Yes, you listen do. here. You do. You don't, no, have no, no. A, you don't have a functioning Navy. You got hungry people sitting up there with rusty boats, and that's your Navy right there, sir. You're trying to tell me how you got it popping. And those rusty boats kick the asses of American yachts and Chinese yachts and all these no, other they, yachts. How does that no, sound? They don't. The, the, even, yes, even they the, did. Even the dude from the Captain Phillips movie, they arrested his ass. And he was happy he got arrested. You look at his arrest pictures, he was like, good, I get to eat some prison food. I'm hungry. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. He was glad to be arrested. Take me to a prison in the West. He was happy to be arrested, sir. Don't, don't put a cherry on a turd, sir. Don't do that, because we know your history. We know your get down. We know your culture. And unfortunately, it's just not popping. That's why you are no. here. That's why you're here, sir. No, we had a strong military, and oh, no, it'll dude. rise. It's slowly getting better. The country's slowly getting better. No, it's We're not. electing our own leaders. Mm -hmm. How about you guys, huh? We're fine. I just want you to improve. I'm helping you out. You I'm trying to help you out. You can't help me, sir. You cannot help me. The only thing you can help me is with my Postmates order. Just deliver my Postmates and just keep it pimping and just go about your business, sir. All Is right. that what you're going to do? You're going to wrap? You're going to wrap okay, in place? Okay, now, now you're boring. Um, I'm, he's boring to me. All right, got him out of here because I don't want to hear this dude to sit here and fantasize about how his country has not failed and he fled. No, I don't want to hear that. This is failed tether babble. All right. Failed tether babble. I do not want to hear it. Do not want to hear it. Do not want to hear it. All right. Let's get Duke, Duke of South. All right. Duke of South. I think that's your name. What's up, Duke? Turn your microphone on. What's up, Layla? I see you, Layla. Okay, Duke, turn your microphone on. All right. He's taking... Let me get Usman. I get Usman in here. Usman, turn your microphone on, because Duke of South, his microphone isn't working. All right. All right. All right, Usman? Hey, my brother, Tariq. How are you doing, brother? I'm good, Usman. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. So, Tariq... Um, quick question, man. I know all the FBAs, and you know, I to me, 
uh, even you know, sometimes you say something that's really, really hurting me because uh, when you like, you know, talk and Africans and how they are fleeing and all that. But to me, I cannot respond to most of that because you know, FBARs, FBAs are just my friends. Okay, my friends, my brothers, right, and all right, that. Right. So I cannot respond to that. But here's the thing that I, I just here to kind of like talk with you today is, um, to you, when are you gonna come to kind of like have a post? like for two or three days, just for solidarity for what happened to Africans in Ukraine and kind of just, you know, what I call like do your part to kind of like, you know, highlight it, talk about it a little bit. So, okay, and, and, and this, okay, now this is the thing, Uzman, yeah. because we've been hearing, okay, Usman, there's, are, are you making some... some Nigerian flapjack. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm just asking you okay. to fly, please. You know, you know, so please. Okay, there's some no, but I'm just there's noise in the back. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry. Hold on. Okay, let me get you. Okay, 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 okay. I get you. I'll, I'll answer your question in all things. Cause I don't know what you in there doing, brother. Damn. What the hell kind of sound was that, brother? And that's the thing. Y'all be calling up with these strange sounds in the back with these different kind of animals I ain't never heard of. That sound like a zebra scratching his hooves on the damn sidewalk. I don't know what that was. But my brother was like, how come we're not talking about solidarity with the what's going on in the Ukraine? Listen, this is the thing. Look at the caller earlier. They call up talking about how they got shit popping and how we need to learn from them and ain't no racism and all of that. And then when y'all get thrown under the bus up there in Europe, now y'all looking at us. Y'all, the first thing that happens, y'all looking at us. How come we don't, to, we, let's get some solidarity. Now y'all want solidarity? We've been telling y'all that white supremacy is a problem and you got to start building your own black nations and you got to build your own black communities and get on code with other black people, which is what we do. We get on code with other black people here. We try to build as much as we can, even though we get sabotaged left and right. Foundation of Black Americans, we are we have built more institutions than any black people on the planet. Foundation of Black Americans, even though we've been sabotaged, we've built up whole communities, had them blown up, burned down, and we go back and rebuild again. We just keep going back and forth, going back and forth. But as far as institutions... Black institutions, foundational black Americans, we've we've done that. So we always got to be on the same page, not when there's an emergency. People talk all of that, that big talk until there's an emergency. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, let's get on some kumbaya. Let's all get together. All right. Little, little Tim. Little Tim, turn your microphone on. Hey, how you doing today? Hey, what's up, little Tim? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Orlando, Florida. All right, little Tim. Now, you are a white man, right? No, I'm black. You can go to my profile. You'll see a video of me talking. Oh, okay. Now, I wait. know I sound weird. I come from the land of Disney World, all right? So I have oh. to have a Mickey Mouse approved voice. Oh, okay. So you, do you work at Disney, Disney World? You work there? Not no more. Oh, okay. Now, um, now, where are you from? Where's your people from? Um, I can trace my family back to Louisiana and Georgia. Okay. But you're out there in Florida, so... Most people, most black people in Florida come from the Caribbean. Any Caribbean people in your family? No, I okay. think I think we're all just like freedmen, pretty okay. much. Like we got ran out of Georgia. Like some white man got mad at my father's grandfather, um, and like pretty much was like, "Yo, if you're here during sundown, we're gonna fucking kill all you." So like they just ran to Jacksonville, Florida. So we just like conquered Florida pretty much after that. It's pretty lit. Uh, now when was this? Ooh, all right, so my granddad is probably all right. He died about five, six years ago, and he's like eighty-five. So, damn, you have me do math. I'm kind of drunk. I'm about to say the forties or thirties. Okay, uh, okay, that's interesting because black folks in that area they ain't really runners like that. They they kick ass. They tried to run black folks out of Atlanta at one point, and black folks fought back. And I'll say in Florida, there's a lot of riders in Florida. But anyway, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? Yeah, I, you know, I really like the freedman term, right? I really like that term a lot. Um, right. Something that I was like, brand, introduced to me um, earlier this year. Um, so I'm pretty new to hearing that term. Um, 
But I feel like it gets used and weaponized against other black people from different countries besides America. And I just don't know if that's like a proper thing to do. And I feel like I, like it gets weaponized against the queer community. And I'm just not a fan of that either. Really? Um, how, how does Freeman get, get weaponized against um, the LGBT community? All right, not the term, but just like people that use the moniker Freeman typically like rally against quote unquote degeneracy in the queer community. And I feel like that's unfair. There are a lot of um, queer black and black uh, brothers and sisters out there that are like really good allies and right. ride harder than like than, than straight people do for the black community. Aww. So it's very odd to me to hear like when, when other black people like just like talk down on, on gay and queer people um, as if that's going to make the black community better if them being gone, you know? But um, I don't know, black people, how do black people talk down on the queer community, though? Because earlier you were talking mad shit about gay people. Who? Whoa, 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 who? All right. I could have sworn it was I could have sworn it was you as well as um, what was the guy's name? The fucking dude from Somalia, the Somalian pirate dude. Um, But every whoa, 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 like when I hear Freeman talk about. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Hold on, I gotta pause you right there. Back up. What did I say about gay people? I didn't even say anything about gay people, let alone anything disparaging. What are you talking about? Hmm, I guess I can't really quote anything like verbatim that you said tonight. Okay, so you made it up. You just made something up. Why did you make something up like that? The reputation that you've kind of built for yourself off of movies like Buck Breaking and uh, of your followers talking talking in a real... Stop. Back it up, because now you just got caught in one lie, and now you're trying to move to another lie. Have you seen Buck Breaking? I've not seen Buck Breaking, no. Buck Breaking isn't demonizing gay people. It's talking about white supremacy. That's what Buck Breaking is about. Especially, we didn't demonize any black person who was gay at all. Oh, okay. Literally at not at all. The movie is not about denigrating black people who are gay at all, because gay black people are also victims of white supremacy. In I fact, agree with you on that. In fact, I stood up for gay black people who were victimized by white supremacists. With oh, the okay. Buck situation. I stood okay. up for those brothers, and I brought them oh. to my platform who were telling us about the Ed Bucks out here. Oh, okay, okay. I guess, I guess the inter- the the impression of you I got from Dylan from people like Dylan Burns is like a little bit different. I need to like look at it myself, and then I'll probably have Dylan questions about that about later that. on down the line. Dylan, who who is Dylan? Dylan who? Dylan Burns. Who is that? I think you and him were having an exchange a little bit earlier, um, a few months ago. Is that a white guy? He's like the white dude from like the Maryland area, long hair, like pretty young. He's like twenty one. I don't know. I don't remember no. I don't remember everybody, dude. Is he somebody who we're supposed to remember? Yeah, he's a pretty big Twitch community following. Um, okay, so that's the problem. You hang around those online white supremacist groups, and you're listening to their rhetoric. That's a problem. Why are you hanging around those guys, or even in, entertaining their type of rhetoric? Because you know how those online gamer dudes and their racism is you know that not every gamer dude is uh is equally racist there are a lot of gamer dudes that fight for the black community no, and they fight don't. for the qu- no they don't there okay. are people that do canvassing for black candidates and there are people that do advocating for black causes online and take on people like neo nazis and grapers and white supremacists all the time so you like i think you so you date white men Right, because that's what you sound like right now. You sound like a dude who dates white dudes. Is that what this is, sir? No, even worse. I date white women. Even okay. worse, bro. Even worse. Okay, but as a queer man, do you date white men and white women? I um, I'm, I'm I don't date men. Um, hey, if I can link up, if I can connect to you, hold on, hold on. So, are you LGBT? Do you consider yourself queer? You would say no. I like you would say no. 
what, what, what do you mean I would say no? It depends on who you ask. Okay. Can I elaborate? Is that so right? Either, either you are or you're not, man. It's, it's, it's okay if I elaborate. I feel like it's like kind of a nuanced answer, the 2022 approved answer. Can I give that one? No, if you have to do all that, then it's, it'll take it'll take thirty seconds. I promise. It it shouldn't even take that. It should be. It'll like, take twenty. Okay, sir. And and right. this is the problem that I have. Yes, sir. What's the problem? When they try to bring this to children in schools, this is mm-hmm. what I have a problem with. Because um... when they try to bring this to children. They play these same games when it comes to children and a lot of the LGBT curriculum. And it's deliberately confusing to children. Now, I know that it's low-key trolling. I know. I'm an adult, and I know. Children don't know any better. Y'all do this around kids, and that's very damaging to kids, these little troll games and talking in circle games that y'all play when it comes to your sexuality. It's 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 cute and funny here because we're adults that shit ain't cool when it comes to kids. And y'all do the same thing around kids. And that ain't cool. Tariq, no one here is a kid. I'm bringing this to you as an adult. No, because I, I can not explain in my talking point. And like, sir, and I've talked to people before about this. When it's time to explain all of this, these names and terms y'all throw out, when it's time to explain, it becomes a whole con game pitch and that is not cool but go ahead let's hear your pitch all right thank you yeah so pretty much um just to just to be like focusing more on like on trans people and trans lives and things um i would be attracted to like someone that had like say imagine Nicki minaj and Nicki minaj has no surgery at all and Nicki Minaj is like, hey, call me Nicholas now. I'm a man. And they take no surgery. They do no hormones, nothing. Yeah, okay. If Nick, if you call yourself a man now, Nicki Minaj, or Nick Minaj, sorry, then yeah, I guess I'm attracted to, to men sometimes. But um, that's it, pretty much. Like, that's like the only circumstance that I would be, <laughs> I would, I'd be I attracted to men. I know that. I know you're attracted to men. So why are you lying to yourself saying that you were not? Yeah, Wait, Tariq, what enough. did I just what no. did I just say? I, I feel like you're ignoring what I just said. I explained it in like less than 20 And this is the problem. Because you have to live a lie. You start lying about other stuff. Just like you lie just out the blue. It's so easy for you to start lying about something that I didn't even say. And you've just kind of told lies back to back. And that type of lying mentality where you have to almost live a lie, that's a problem. All right. Once again, I have no intention of lying. Um, I think what I said earlier was I didn't mean that to be a lie. I didn't mean to come off as a lie. I said that if someone claimed that they were a man and they had the body and parts of a woman and took no... Okay, let me get some more callers. Okay. Let me get some more callers here. Okay. All right. That's enough of that. I don't hear nobody sitting up lying all night. And somebody who's confused about their own sexuality. And, you know. Uh, all right. Let's get on. Um, hey, what's going on, brother? What's up, Miss Sean? Hey, um, I hope you're doing good, man. Um, so I want to give you a little introduction about myself. Uh, my my grandfather is an immigrant. Oh, uh, he moved to America. Okay. Yeah, we live in Virginia. Um, I'm originally Nigerian, and uh, I've been listening to your spaces for a long time. Yeah. And uh, there are like some stuff that are uh, controversial. There are some facts on what you say, but there are some stuff that I disagree with. Such as what? What? Such as what? What do you disagree with, sir? Yeah. Um. So I feel like oh, a lot of people oh, that are foundation Black Americans, they do look down at us as uh, Nigerians. You know, we don't. We don't. I can promise you, we do not. That is not even in our nature, and it's not in our culture. 
Yeah. And I'm a full blooded foundational black American. Let me tell you something. None of our parents sit around and say, hey, if you go out here, you stay away from them Nigerians. We Nobody says that in our culture. That is not our culture. In fact, we are the only ones who've been upholding West African culture around the world. We're the ones propping it up. We do not look down on any African people. Do not tell that untruth statement, sir. We just do not. I will, I will not let you tell that untruth statement, sir. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't do that. Now, y'all come over here talking about stay away from the Akata. That's something that's common. That's a common thing with many of you. That is a common thing. We don't do that. We don't do that at all. We do not do that. That is not in our culture. So let's not say that. Foundation of Black Americans, we are the most welcoming people on the damn planet. I'm not going to hear nobody tell no lie like that. That's, man, I'm not going to. You go to HBCUs and we, there's so many African immigrants there that we embrace. Look at Howard University, man. That's just like the damn immigration office out there at Howard University. We embrace everybody. We don't look down on them. That's a projection, man. No, we don't. We do not. We do not at all. All right, let's not tell that. I don't want people to start lying. You will not lie on foundational black Americans. Oh, let's get some more people in here. And by the way, guys, um, hopefully in a, in a few days, I say in a few weeks, I, let me give it some time. Hopefully in a few weeks, we'll have some good news about the museum, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully in a few weeks, we're putting we we we're putting some stuff together now. We got another location back on Crenshaw because uh, for a minute we were looking at other places because nothing was available on Crenshaw. That's where we really wanted to get it. Now we got a property on Crenshaw that we went to today, so we're getting all the paperwork together. So I would need everybody to knock on wood for me and knock on wood for us. And let's see if we can get this thing popping. I keep you guys posted within the next couple of weeks, but we're, we're working this thing out and it's in a real good spot out there. So we're, we're trying to close on this thing. Now the price is phenomenal. So we're, we're trying to close on this thing now. So I keep y'all posted. What's up young lady. I had you on here before. The lady with the heart. Yeah, you sure did. You did have me before. And at first <laughs> I thought you were cool, but like now you come across as ignorant and close minded. Right. And you've been saying little slick stuff about black folks because you sit up here with these white supremacists. I've seen some of your what posts. Are you you're talking real about? What are you smoking crap yeah. or something? What do you want? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit up on the these little Twitch platforms and you say little slick stuff. So yeah, you one of them. Yeah, you wanted them. Come on, don't mute me. Let me speak at least. Come on, how the ball? Oh, no. how, how the... Okay. Uh, first of all, you slow your little ass down and understand that there's order in here. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna respect this room. You're not gonna come in here just bobbing your mouth now. Like I said, you hang out on them little white supremacist gaming platforms and you start sounding just like them. So, yeah, you real funny style. Listen, you act tough, but in real life, you get on your knees and suck my. So, uh, ma'am, you're not going to use your little funky potty mouth that you blow zaddy with. You're not going to do that. Okay, a little fake Mariah Carey. You no, know, I think you just need some pussy for real. Cause you seem ma'am, not, not yours, not yours, ma'am, because it smells like mayonnaise and jelly. Okay? You think you're exotic. you you mad at black folks because you were almost white and your black jeans messed it up, ma'am. You're hateful towards black society. Why are you rejecting your dick cheese? Ma'am, please, your little funky peppermint patty titties are not appealing to us. And you go over there with them 
white supremacist dudes and you sit up here spreading that alt-right gibberish you and, would legit... and and you don't even get the benefits of being white ma'am <laughs> you would stutter speaking to me irl why do you act tough online like you're ma'am, funny. ma'am little little headlights girl stop it you're mad because you got black jeans and you're not all the way white and the white people remind you of it and you're mad. No. You're Isn't your wife the same color as me? Your no, wife is my, white my, as fuck. Your wife looks I, just I, like I, No, my wife doesn't look like you. My wife has beautiful black features and you have head lights and no titties. Okay. You're right. I'm fine as fuck and your wife looks like No, No, you're not, ma'am. No, that's why you have a filter on your picture right now. You're not, ma'am. You look like a Oh, uh, you look like Ariana Grande on a hunger strike. Stop it. You're not that fly. And you, you look and sound you get no bitches. It's- uh, yeah, I, I get bitches like your dad. Your dad is my bitch. And he abandoned that white woman. You who- like BBC? Like, I'm all for that shit. Like, if you like some BBC in your... Ma'am, stop it. Ma'am, you little funky head lice having harlot. You're very upset at black people. You're mad at the black community because we gave you black jeans. So I would have you on your knees as we speak right now. Ma'am, please. You you messing with a player. You be on the track somewhere. Messing with players like this over here. We I make smack the shit out of it and you think. Ma'am, ma'am I... we'll, make, we'll make you go get some money. You, you play around over here. All right, we can take a pig, put on a wig, give her a gig, and put her on fig. If you know what that means, so Girl, don't... you are old as hell. What are you doing, ma'am? Ma'am, and you look old because the white jeans are kicking in, ma'am. The, you're, you're you're about to turn into a Karen any day now, ma'am, because those degenerate white well, supremacists. We all knew it was a small dick here, uh, ma- all... ma'am. Ma'am, your clitoris is a small dick, ma'am, because you're you're a baby hermaphrodite. And that's why you're mad because you're you don't. Not wrong. My clit is bigger than your dick. Yeah, uh, yes it is, ma'am. Yes it is. And it it smells like salmon. Okay. So this is why you're mad at black society. And stop using all of that filter, ma'am, and show the, the craters and the acne on your face, ma'am. Okay. Without them filters. How about without them filters, ma'am, you look like a baby Tyrannosaurus Rex with all of the craters and, and potches on your face. Look at you. Oh, you're a certified pussy. You won't even let me speak because you know I'm right. No, ma'am. You're just babbling. Bro, I'm done. I'm yeah. literally making you my bitch. Your mayonnaise babbling, ma'am. Your mayonnaise babbling with a bunch of filters on your damn profile. You're trash. And you think you're hot and exotic and you're not. And you want, you're a wannabe white girl. You'll never be white, ma'am. You'll never be white. Stop, stop being mad because the white supremacists are reminding you that you're just a little negress play toy and they ain't wifing you up. And that's why you're mad. Jasmine? Jasmine, where you, where you at, Jasmine? Oh, you're my bitch right now. You're oh, basically on your knees sucking my toes because you're a bitch. Ma'am, I'm not sucking your mayonnaise encrusted toes, ma'am. I would never do that. No, you you have white girl feet and they smell like bologna. I don't want that, ma'am. You were just in my DMs asking me for my OnlyFans. What are you talking ma'am, about? Ma'am, I will give you, you, dead ass, you- I will give you ten thousand dollars if you can show me some post it on the screen. Nobody's asking you anything, ma'am. Give me a break. Nobody's asking you anything, ma'am. You're a little tragic mulatto bedwench. Nobody's hollering at you at all, ma'am. You're really not that appealing. Okay? Hey, why'd you ask me to hit it from the back then? Well, ma'am, the only thing you need to hit from the back is a flat iron to press your hair down because it's kinking up because you are a Negro who's trying to pass for white. And your Negro kitchen keeps popping up, and you you're mad because you don't know how to flat iron your hair because your mama never taught you, ma'am. That's the only thing you need to hit from the you back. You need to flat iron that dick because you. And ma'am, this dick, you don't worry about it. You just you worry about white men and their Vienna sausages that they're hitting you with, ma'am. You you're not qualified to get some of this foundational Black American pole, ma'am. You're not qualified. You got to be certified and qualified to be by my side 
and you're not, ma'am. You're dusty, funky, and you're a bed wench. And I don't rock with women like you, Sorry, ma'am. why are you projecting your wife? On- ma'am, my wife is fly, and you have flies around you. So you're, you're very upset that you have no flavor. Your wife is being held captive by... Ma'am, stop it. My wife is chilling, and you're sitting in your studio apartment hoping to get a white boy who comes over and have slave play sex with you, ma'am, and now you're mad. That's what you're mad at, ma'am. The white men are laying up with you, and they ain't wiping you up. You're mad because the white men don't want to take you home to their white mamas. Now you're mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Embrace your Negro side. Go put some Lowry seasoning salt on some of them avocado. So how about you get some fucking real pussy? You need some help? I got you. Listen to your potty mouth. Your potty mouth. This is how filthy you are. That's why Brad don't want to take you around his mom. The white boys you, you be dating, they like, Mom, I'm dating somebody. I don't want you to meet her, though. Why not? She's going to school in another state, Mom. He has to make excuses for your ass. That's right. I'm a filthy girl. And what? What about it? Yeah, yeah. The white boys got to make excuses why they can't take you to meet their mama. Yeah, she can't meet you. She has she has corona. She can't come meet you, mom. She has COVID. Yeah, All right, yeah. so, so what white woman broke your heart for real? Like really? your, your your mother, your mama. And, and she broke my heart because she had a baby and didn't tell me about it. And I guess that's you. So I'm your daddy. I'm your black daddy. That- Daddy? I'm your Is that black. You? Yes, I am. I'm your black daddy. And I'm, I'm going to give you some child support money. And But I'm going to give it to you in EBT cards. So, okay. Oh, you broke as hell if you have EBT. No offense. I thought you had 10K. What happened oh, to that? Oh, Lord. Corny, corny, corny. Yeah, you, you've been hanging around the white side of your family, man. Yeah, you, you clearly don't know some of the black side of your family, which I remember you told me. You don't really rock with the black side of your family because you hate them. Because they remind you, <clears throat> they remind you of the Negro genes. They never taught you how to braid hair, nothing. You sitting over there with a funky, frizzy ponytail and a scrunchie, not knowing what to damn do. You can't even <laughs> spell scrunchie, dumbass. Okay, I can spell funky, and that's you and your little JJ, ma'am. Okay. So, anywho, so you need to go on back over there on Twitch. Okay, bye. I hope you don't <clears throat> the fucking wife and stop projecting. Okay, ma'am. Going in there, make you some Rice Krispie treats and figure out a way to hot comb your hair without burning all your edges off because your white mama never taught you how to do your Negro hair. And don't be mad at me. Take your ass down to the hood and learn how to braid hair. I hope you get some pussy that'll set your... And and long as it's not yours, ma'am. I don't want yours because the that that smell of sulfur is disgusting to my my senses, ma'am. But anyway, thank you, Jasmine. You have a good day. Okay, goodbye, bye, ma'am. Okay, she has a potty mouth. Oh, she has a potty mouth. She sits on those Twitch apps. See that? Watch these people who sit up with these white supremacist gamers. They got a real. They got a real bug in the ass about foundation of black Americans, just black people, period. They got a real bug in the ass about that. Okay, let me get some more people here. Okay. Uh, who are these? Okay, who are these dudes looking like Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? Okay, who are these guys? I see you, Scarface, the Italian. What's up, um, um, dollar twelve. What, what the hell is your name? Oh, it's um, JV- it's twelve dollar JVC headphones from Walmart. Sorry, it's a bit of a mouth. There thing. you. Okay. Well, what's up? What now? Where are you from? Twelve dollar JVC. Um, I live in Utah, but uh, I was born in Chicago. Okay, and you are a white man, uh, I'm, right? I'm Syrian. A Syrian. Okay. Um, what? Where's that? Assume, um, where it's is in that? the Middle um, East, so it's like north, uh, northwestern Iraq, like southeastern Turkey. It's not a country anymore. Oh. oh okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, what country is it? What, what territory is it? Uh, now? well, my my family's from Iraq. Okay, so you, you're white. Okay, uh, over here you're I, white. Yeah, over yeah, here I you're guess, white. Yeah. Okay. Because Iraq. Okay, yeah, it's white. You white. So, what's on your mind, bro? Um, so I have a, I guess, a question I wanted to ask you about. So, um, in your work, you know, you you speak and write, uh, I think, very powerfully about, um. The history of like white supremacy in in this country in the united states right and you have this whole idea right. of like foundational black americans 
so I'm kind of like wondering how you um because you know knowing this history of like the the this racism in the United States and you know the history of like American imperialism etc and like just the evils um inflicted uh you know by this country since its founding um I wonder kind of like how you um kind of conceive of because you know your the whole idea of like foundational black americans right it's like kind of I, i'm i'm not super familiar with all your work so i'm there's a lot i've you know i don't know everything that you that you you know believe but I, right, I, right, uh, right. some a part of your like project seems to be kind of reclaiming like a, a concept of like an americanness if that makes sense um so i wonder like how knowing like this history of like the evils of this country how you kind of like uh, I'm not trying to like trip you up or like own you or whatever. I'm just like wondering how you, like h- h- how you kind of conceive that. Does that make sense? Like how you kind of no. See, well, yeah, okay. It sounds like you're trying to box in our lineage into something. I, I don't know what you're trying oh, to box I, it I into. Don't mean it, to. It, I, I just was right, interested right. in hearing like you right. you speak about that, like th- this idea of like right. constructing and like an an Americanness out of this, you know, this history or whatever. We, well, we don't have to construct it because the only true Americans are foundational black Americans. We are the only true Americans. What do you think an American means? What does it mean to be an American? Uh, I guess it means to be someone who, you know, lives here and identifies with, you know, being an American. Someone who lives here, I guess. That's that's what I would. But let be very clear. Foundational black Americans are the embodiment of what America is supposed to be. We are the only people who embody everything that America is supposed to be. We are very patriotic. We're very loyal. We're the only group that built the country from scratch. A foundational black American woman, evil or girl, she was a girl, even so the first modern American flag um, um, Veterans Day and Memorial Day. I mean, that's what I mean. Mem- Memorial Day, memorializing veterans and people who fought for the country. That was created by Foundation of Black Americans. We are the most patriotic people. We're the most welcoming people. All of that stuff. So when we look at our lineage, which is a real lineage, and it's a unique lineage, we have a, a lineage that's unique to every other group. Every other group don't have our lineage. We have a specific lineage and we're acknowledging our lineage in a positive way. The key is a positive way because the thing is a lot of people acknowledge that foundation of black Americans are, uh, are a specific group, but they look at it as a negative thing. Meaning when you go to America, Oh, those niggas over there. Or when you go to America, those Akadas over there, or those Jareers over there, whatever derogatory name, all of these different cultures, have derogatory names specifically for us because they look at us as a different group in a negative sense. We look at ourselves as that same different group in the positive sense that it should be. And that's what the foundation of Black American understanding of our lineage is. It's just a lineage that we understand. That that makes sense? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, All right. Can I ask like a follow-up question? Yes, or... indeed. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Um, so, like, I think what you said makes sense. It's, like, um, that foundational Black Americans represent, like, a positive vision of, like, what America is supposed to be. Um, what would you say, though, to people who would say that, like, oh, um, for example, like, people who would point out, like, the the, the fact that, like, America is, like, um, you know, someone argued, that, someone argued that America, you know, being is only possible as, like, a, you know, the, the, you know, the fact that America was, like, built on, like, um, you know, like stolen, like indigenous land or whatever, for example, like, what would you say to people who would like bring up things like that? Um, when you discuss like, you know, the idea of like being paid, you know, the idea of patriotism. Right. 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 Well, yes, it was built on stolen indigenous land and many black people were those indigenous people. Sure. Sure. You understand? And systematic global white supremacy, because we're under a system of white supremacy that's global. White supremacy Mm -hmm. is global and we're the only group that kind of stands up to it consistently and we don't flee where you're from over there in Iraq, that's dominated by white supremacy. 
because they're getting the oil over there. They control the oil and they control the economy. And that's why there's always wars and turmoil over there. And that's why people have to flee and get the hell out of there. So white supremacy is a global thing. They've taken over all the territories, not just over here. People got this thing, well, it's taken over the land here. No, they've taken over everywhere. White supremacists control all of it. And then they allow certain groups to classify themselves as white when they show that they're going to be on team white supremacy, even though you might not get all the benefits and privileges of white supremacy, but you won't get treated as bad as the the FBAs over there. So they everybody has this little janky deal with the white supremacists. Other groups are cool with playing second fiddle to white supremacists. We, we're not. Foundation of Black Americans, we try to fight a tooth and nail. That makes sense? Yeah, I see. I, 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 I do see what you're saying, yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, well, thank you so much, $12 JVC. I appreciate you for calling. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get E in here. E Butter, I think that's your name. E, we've got a lot of folks in here. E, hop on, bro. E, where you at, man? E, you want to, there you go. E, you want to turn your microphone on? Okay, I'm trying to give you a chance here. I don't want you to slow up the momentum of the flow here. All right. All right. E, let me get somebody else on here. Let me get this brother Pickle Juice. And Pickle Juice, it looks like he's from Somalia. Pickle Juice. I think that's your name. Oh. Uh-huh. Who is this person? The caveman. Okay, who is that person? Oh, no. Uh oh. What's up, caveman? Okay. Okay. Yeah. He got flies in the back, so he's out there taking a shower in the backyard. Okay. Let's get um let's get some more folks in here. Oh, who is this? Sarsaz? Oh, who is this person here? Okay. Hold on one second. Let me uh, where we at? Where we at? Okay. Yeah, uh, let me see who's Jason. Let's get Jason in here. All right, let's get Jason in here. Jason, hop on, bro. Let's see what's happening with you. Hello. What's up, Jason? Oh, uh, what's up, Tariq, man? Let me turn my humidifier off real quick. There you go. My nigga sleep with the humidifier. You're gonna get them lungs right. What's on what's on your mind, bro? Um Nothing much, man. I just wanted to say um, I appreciate all the good work. Um, I just found you out like two years ago, like during the pandemic when it first started. And like you really changed my mind on a whole bunch of stuff and how I see a whole bunch of stuff between like us and like Africans and Caribbeans. Now, it's just like my whole mind has been different, basically. Yeah. Real talk. man. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. What's up? The Giving. What's your name? The Giver? The Giver? Hello. My name is The Giver. How are you? The good. Good. How are you? I'm good. And where are you from? I'm from Charleston. Oh, okay. Are you FBA? Um, I'm a Black American. Yes. Okay. Um, where's your family from? You say you're Black American. That's not telling me anything. Charleston, South Carolina. I just said I'm from Charleston. Okay. Are your family descendants of slaves in America? Yes. Okay. Then you are a foundational Black American. <laughs> I don't really consider myself a foundational Black American. I'm well, if just they a were Black slaves. American. Um, if they were slaves in America, they were the foundation of America, so they're foundational Black Americans. I mean, I feel like that's just a created term, and I feel like I don't know. Uh, ma'am, every term is created. I know, Black American. Like, I don't know, like foundational Black Americans, like people that label themselves with being a foundational Black American, like they're xenophobic to like other. Black African people in the diaspora. No, they're not. You are. Like, a lot of people, like, I don't know, like, a lot of people are, like, anti-African. Or, like, anti-other nope, people. And you openly display it. Like, don't act crazy now. No, I'm not. Yes, you do. And you're, 
you don't sound foundational black American because you're lying, ma'am. And most people who lie like that are not from here. I'm so you not know. lying. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. And, and okay, no, no, that don't mean anything, ma'am. You don't sound FBA. So how does the FBA you, sound? If, because you just lied about something. About and what? if you lie about that, you said that we're xenophobic. That's a lie. And if you lie about that, you will lie about your lineage. Oh, wow. So you're not FBA, are you, ma'am? You're not. I am. You're, you're... I'm from Charleston. My family is just my like my ancestors are descendants of slaves. Like you're not uh, going to tell me. You're not going to sit here and try to tell me like I'm not uh, black American. Uh, yeah, it don't sound like it, ma'am. Either that, or you're an anchor baby. What is that? That's somebody who come from descendants of people who came over here and got with an FBA and had a baby. Oh, you're just you hear yourself? Like why like why are you like doing that? Why am I doing what, ma'am? Like why are you like acting like I don't know? Acting like what? You're being anti African, like ma'am. How you're are you just saying know? words? Yeah, just just admit where you're from. Don't don't sit here and play games. Like you're that. ignorant because I'm like so I'm not a found. I don't consider myself a foundational Black American. But because my ancestors not- are descendants of slaves. Like, what are you know. talking about? Like, my family has lineage all throughout America. Like, uh, no. You sound like your family comes from the diaspora somewhere, either Africa or the Caribbean. Okay. Because wh- who would get upset or offended by their own lineage? I'm not getting upset. I just yes, have a problem are. with Xenoph or like how y'all are like found Xenoph- people that oh. consider themselves foundation. Slow down, no. Nobody gets upset about their lineage. That makes zero sense. So it sounds like you're in here pretending you're five dollar FBA. You're not an FBA. Nobody gets offended by their lineage, ma'am. And you're talking about xenophobia. Don't want xenophobic to nobody. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, she got up out of here. Watch these $5 FBAs. She's not FBA. You got a lot of people who pretend to be FBA to come up in our circles and then the truth comes out. And then when you start lying, that lets me know you ain't FBA because if you start lying about random stuff, that means you lied about your lineage. You lie about anything. Understand the rule of thumb. If a person will lie about one thing, they will lie about everything. So she was lying. And I I, have you noticed we've been seeing a lot of five dollar FBAs pop in these rooms. Pretending to be us. And then they get to talking and we can hear the accents come out. Yeah. And projecting. They come in here projecting. They do a lot of projecting. Uh, let me get some folks in here. Oh, man, a lot of folks in here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, where we at? Where we at? I want to get some new faces. Oh, who is this? Back to Black? Uh, let me get some more folks. There's a lot of folks. Let me get... Um, all right, let's get seven, 716 Swing. I get 716 Swing in here. All right, 716 Swing. Tariq Elite, what's happening? What's up, brother? Who is this? How are you? Uh, 716 Swing, Cam Man the Ambassador on here. Kobe Lord. Hello? Okay, brother. Shit. Okay. Um, I don't know what was going on with your phone, brother. There was a lot of extra stuff going on there. All right, let's try Rahel X. Let's go to Rahel X. All right, Rahel X. All right, let's try Rahel X. My, my brother came in early with a lot of energy and a lot of energy. All right, Rahel. Hey, what's up, Tariq? Oh, is this the Ethiopian girl? Uh, I'm not Ethiopian, but I had a quick question for you. Um, hey, hold on. Is this that Somali chick <laughs> from the, the goofy I'm not, Somali? I'm not Somali. Are you going to go through the whole of Horn of Africa? Now, where, where are you from? 
Because you already you sound like them trolls. I don't. I'm I, not I don't want to. I'm trying to troll you. you. I'm trying to ask you a question because I missed your uh, input earlier about the Ukraine situation. I was just wondering, did you feel any empathy for Africans and what they were going through, or what was your uh, feedback on that situation? That's what I. That's my question. No. Okay. Let's go. Now you're East African. Now where are you from? Uh, I'm from Washington State. America. Stop playing games. Where are you from, Rahel? That's East African. Where are you from? I'm. I'm. I. I, I don't need to say. Uh, as of right now, I'm an American citizen. Okay. okay. Please stop being ashamed of your homeland. <sighs> I, I am not ashamed of my homeland. I just don't think uh, it has anything to do with this conversation. Uh, Rahel, that's Ethiopian. That sounds Ethiopian. No, I have no shame of my African roots at all. I am very proud of my African roots. Okay, so yeah, don't you're calling me asking me if I have any sympathy, empathy, and you don't even have empathy or sympathy for your homeland, <laughs> ma'am. You won't even no, claim no. it. Why no, you... I, I, yeah, because oh, because I'm coming because I'm, I'm not I'm... representing. The thing is, I'm not representing where I'm from. I'm representing me, and I don't like. I don't like when you ask those type of questions as though an individual represents a whole. Okay. You're saying you're representing you. So why do you want me to represent to the people that's up there in um, Ukraine and Poland getting the white supremacists jumping down their throats? So why should I have an opinion on it, which I've stated my feelings on the situation. So. So if it's all about just us representing ourselves as individuals, why should we have an opinion on that? Why should why do you want my input on what's happening up there? Rahel, Rahel X. Turn your microphone on, Rahel. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought it was turned yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, it's because I'm curious. I follow you and I, I missed that part. So I was just curious about your input. That's all. Yeah. Um, have you helped your people up there in the UK, in the Ukraine? Have you helped any people up there at all? Ooh, not at all. But that's my thing. How come y'all not helping your people up there? These are your folks. And y'all just letting them, you know, scatter around and just be mistreated and nobody's giving them a lifeline. And I'm looking at their home countries. It looks like their home countries have turned their backs on many of them. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. For sure, uh, especially when you um, consider the lack of uh, um, energy that's coming from uh, the African Union and uh, just the lack of uh, uh, due diligence in, in regards to fighting for these uh, students and uh, individuals that actually work in the probably migrants that work in, in Ukraine. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I see. I see that as well, Tariq. I agree with that. But yeah. mm -hmm, go ahead. And my thing, and I, and I hate to see any people mistreated. I hate that, especially by white supremacists. There's a lot of white supremacists in the Ukraine, but here's the problem. When we, Foundation of Black Americans, sit up here and try to tell folks about the problem with white supremacy, y'all y'all come here telling us that we just need to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and we just need to work hard and ain't no white supremacy and you run your own nation and you got a bunch of degrees and white supremacy ain't going to do nothing to you and y'all just stuck on racism and y'all tell us all this stuff and then when y'all get smacked in the face by the white supremacists, it's like, hey, Tariq, what y'all think? I think what I told you before, white supremacy is a problem. That's what I think. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think you confirmed what I think about you uh, and that you do you do have empathy and you probably have a really soft heart towards all black people. So that's that's my conclusion. Thank you. That's all. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I never said anything to the contrary. I've helped African people and black people all over the world. I've never said anything to the contrary. I've been all over Africa, helped many people over there, helped many black people in the Caribbean. I help my people here all the time. So my track record was never in question. Eh? Now, y'all track record of helping your own damn people, that's in question. That's what I'm looking at. 
I'm not even looking at the people up in the UK or in the Ukraine and Poland because I know what the get down is up there and I feel bad for what's happening to them. But I'm looking at the people from their damn homelands. I'm looking at these people, the, the African Union. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at all these people who pop in our rooms trying to give us some damn advice on what we need to do. And your folks up there getting smacked around up in the damn Ukraine. That's who I'm looking at. I'm looking at the people who got all the smoke for foundational black Americans, but no smoke and no help for their people. I'm looking for all these billionaires that y'all keep telling us about. There's a billionaire in Nigeria. There's a billionaire in Uganda. We got a lot of billionaires here. Okay, where they at? Where they at? Where they at, though? Where's Cynthia Erivo and Wale and all of these people? That's what I want to know. Man, let me get a couple of more folks in here. Um, let me get a couple of more folks. Lee Jose. Well, let me get Lee Jose in here. Lee Jose. I think that's your name, brother. Lee Jose. All right, Lee Jose, where you at, man? Turn your microphone on. Well, that fish smells good, man. Hi. Hey, what's up, Lee? Yeah, what's up, man? Um, just wanted so, to say... Uh, wait, where are you calling from, Lee? Uh, UK. UK, there you go. What's on your mind? No, I just wanted to say, like, I feel all of your sentiments, everything that you just say, like, about this whole Ukraine thing. Um, I was saying the same thing to people for years about other shit as well so i i completely agree with you lot on that sentence thank thank you so much lee shit okay just get it on out bro thank you so much and your phone is hella janky what time is it over there in the uk guys all right let's um let's get um sam 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 vura i think that's his name sam vura let's get sam vura in here and then we're going to get Kayana, Kayane in here. Then we'll get Kayana next. But let's get Sam Vora. Hi, Chris. What's up, Sam Vora? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm calling from the UK. There you go. A lot of UK people. <laughs> All right, what's on your mind, Vora? Nah, I just listened up. Um, yeah, basically, I think with these African governments, yeah. I'm from Zimbabwe originally. Yeah. And if you see what's happening in Zimbabwe right now, we're going towards elections. And the government is beating up, you know, people from the opposition. So I think as African people, generally, we're just not united. And I don't see yeah. how a government that's willing to, you know, beat the crap out of its own people could start supporting its citizens in the Ukraine. So I think, you know, as black people, as Africans, you know, we, we really need to put ourselves in check. You know what I mean? We don't understand how to unite at a nationalist level. Yeah, we unite yep. when you're trying to make money. But when it comes to uniting at a global agenda, we don't understand geopolitics, period. Yeah, we're not, yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not a global people. I think we're very tribal and very communal. And that's our problem. Yeah. We need to elevate our mindsets to get to a global understanding of the geopolitics globally. And then realize that there's a point at which we need to unite and, you know, there's a point at which we need to um, thrive. So when you're thriving at individual levels, that's good. But at global level, at national level, as a, as a black community, you know, it's like white supremacy. The way white supremacy operates, when they need to unite, they unite. Do you know what I mean? When they need to work with Russia, they'll work with Russia. But when they need to put them in check, they'll put them in check. So that's where we're failing as black people. We don't put each other in check. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a big... Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Let's get Kayana. Kayana, hop on, dear. It's Kiana. Thank you so much, Tariq, for allowing me to speak. Yes, um, I also yes. want to thank you for all the knowledge you've been putting out. Um, I just want to say my kids are real versed in all of the um, Hidden Color series in your book, um, uh, uh, The American Race Baiter. That book was excellent. So thank you so much for all the knowledge you've been putting out and you all the game you've been giving us as uh, foundational Black Americans. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, absolutely. What right. I wanted to ask was, um, I haven't heard you speak a lot about 
um, foundational black Americans and religion and the effects that religion, um, I think Christianity in, in particular has had on foundational black Americans. Oh, yeah. So, the question. Yeah, if, yeah, if you could just kind of, you know, expound on that for me a little bit. Thank you, Wadi. I get on that. Yeah, religion. My thing is, and I was talking about this in another room earlier. My religion is the religion of melanin. I worship melanin and the empowerment of melanin people. That's my only religion. Um, and I say that because I was getting on some guys about um, some Nigerian guys were talking about something, and we we pointed out that there's a big statue of white Jesus in the middle of Nigeria, where they got offended. Don't talk about my God, nigga. And they're like, we're like, hey, God, Jesus ain't white. They wanted to argue about Jesus being white. They wanted to argue with us. Niggas were really, they were fighting with us. Like, how dare you not say Jesus is white? It was on that type of shit. And I'm like, okay, this religion thing, which is the religion of white supremacy, because that's the real religion that black folks worship. Too many black folks worship the religion of white supremacy. I worship the religion of melanin, which is the real God energy of the universe. The melanin, darkness, dark, that's where the dark energy, carbon, space comes out of triple darkness. That's the God energy to me. That's what I worship. This whole thing with niggas running around with white Jesus and, and foundational black Americans, we don't do the white Jesus thing like that, you know, unless you old, just old niggas do it. But um, generally, we don't do the white Jesus thing. But that's my take on religion. Let's get um, Padrone. Turn your microphone on. Hey, Tariq, how are you? Where I'm you good. From South Africa. How are you guys how, doing? Hope you're good. How are you? No, I'm doing good. Um, so I had three points to raise. The first was on uh, the guy who spoke two speakers ago, and he was talking about African unity. And, you know, there's one thing that we're struggling with here in South Africa is um, civil society, getting those movements together and mobilizing them. Um, there's a, a white supremacy group for all intents and purposes that are framing themselves as something else. They go by the name of Afri Forum, and they've put together a mobilization strategy that goes all the way through our legislative processes. They've got people in high areas, and they really make a nuisance of themselves in our country. So thinking about it this way, you know, somebody said back to, you know, black South Africans, and when I say black, I mean South Africans of color. They said to them, well, why aren't you putting together any civil society movements? Why aren't you doing the same thing? taking advantage of the advantages that we have in play right now and making use of that. So uh, I do agree with what he's saying about uh, a nationalist agenda and having an African nationalist agenda. I think that's something that is so helpful when you're dealing with international relations and also international incidents. We were seeing videos in China during the COVID crisis where guys were suddenly attacking African merchants and having things whereby it almost felt as if Africa was under attack for something that we didn't start. Right. The second point I wanted to raise on uh, African identity where, you know, I understand, I empathize with the whole black American identity thing where you guys are specifically looking at getting a foundational sense of self. And from our perspective, I can relate a lot to that because here in South Africa, we're still dealing with that as, lo as, as long as, you know, democracy has been in play here in South Africa. We've been dealing with a multitude of, of racial issues that still haven't resolved themselves. And for me, the biggest concern here is self-identification. Self-identification needs to be at the core of everything that you are, your inner being. If you are comfortable with who you are, there won't be any debate about who you can be and how other people are diagnosing or labeling you. Mm -hmm. um, the third point I wanted to raise, and um, I think this one is talking to you know people of color in general. Firstly, the capital is not in our hands. We're sitting in a situation where power is not being decentralized fast enough. We're fighting a juggernaut here that's been in play for hundreds of years since colonial history started. So it's not something that we can fix up through spaces. Yes, we can have strong discourses about this, but this is something that we need to strategically plan on. You know, um, I, I think of the Malcolm X's of the day, the Nelson Mandela's, um, uh, Martin Luther King, um, the, the guys in West Africa, uh, dealing with all of these situations, those icons had one specific MO. They didn't try to fix everything. They right. chose one specific point of civil liberty, and they targeted that point right down to the team, made it their life's journey to make sure that they dealt with that. If we have enough people who are doing all these small partial things to actually append this greater movement, 
I think there'd be a lot more effective resistance that we'd be able to put up as well. Yes, indeed, man. Thank you so much, man. Very, very good input, brother. Very, very good input. All right. Let me see who else we got. A lot of folks still. Let's get um Christian Hammer. All right, Christian Hammer, hop on. Hop on, Christian Hammer. What up, bro? Hey, brother, how are you? Know, it's a great night. I'm loving it. I, um, real quick, man, I just wanted to ask you a quick one. Go ahead, brother. I was listening to the reparations discussion in California, and you chimed in. You did a great job. And they were saying that um, it should not be based off of lineage, but instead it should be based off of just being African or having an African background or being black uh, because they don't want a repeat of the whole thing. Um, by that same logic, do you think that they would agree that um, Ethiopian Jews deserve Holocaust reparations, including back pay? Because after, after all, they are Jewish and they've certainly been discriminated against. So you think they'd agree that they deserve back pay for Holocaust reparations, the Ethiopian Jews? Just saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that I don't <laughs> know. But, uh, yeah, but as far as um, them basing it off just you being black, that ain't going to work. We have to shut that down at all costs. It has to be lineage-based. That's why it has to be specifically for foundational black Americans because other groups will come in and it will infiltrate the whole thing It'll mess everything up because then other groups are going to non-black groups are going to jump on it. So we can't go for that at all. All right, let me get some more folks in here. All right. Let me see where we are. Okay, is, is broke Mariah Carey still in here? Lurking. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing some of these folks in here. Hold on. This Eileen. I see you, Eileen. You were in the... Okay. I see you, Eileen. I'm seeing some of the people who kind of low-key talking trash because my name is trending in certain areas right now. And I want to see some of the people, if you got something to say, say it in here. Yeah, if you got something to say, come on in here and say it. You know, in some areas, my name is trending. Whenever I go live, I, I trend in certain areas. But yeah, if you got something to say, come in here and say that shit with your chest. At least broke down um, 3LW. She, she hopped in here with her cornball nonsense, but at least she got in here and she... T she she you know she got this work with her chin up. All right, all right. Let's just, let's go to MAGA County Billy. Let's go to this guy. MAGA County, okay. Ghost of the White House, okay. Turn your microphone on, bro. Ghost of the White House. Turn your microphone on, man. We're going to try it again. If you raise your hand, get on the microphone. Turn your microphone on, buddy. Okay, what's up, man? Billy? Okay, he's doing a late night shift washing dishes at Ruby Tuesdays. Okay. <laughs> Yo, What's up, Billy? All right, Billy. So he don't have it going on right now. Let me get him out of here. All right, let me get some other people in here. Let me get Trenton in here. All right, Trenton. Trenton, Washington. I see Trenton. Raise your hand. Twin Trenton is raising his hand. Hop on in here, Trenton. Now, Trenton, you always, you're always raising your hand in the room. 
want to get on. Sorry, my bad. To... I get you on. of an argument about, you know, the origins of hip-hop. <sighs> Just to let you know, my dad, he agrees with some of your stuff, but when it comes to the origins of, the, the origins of hip-hop, <laughs> he thinks you're kind of capping a little bit. Okay, yeah, let's go. Let's, now, where's your dad from? Well, it's a bit of a... Uh, well, my dad's half, half FBA, half, uh, half Caribbean, yes. Where where in the Caribbean? Um, funny story. My um uh, my father's uh mother was born in Guatemala, but she's like like black. So what? yeah, she's like the black Mayans and all that. So yeah. So yeah, me and my dad got to argument about hip hop, and then I tried to tell I tried to show him the video of the Jubileers doing hip hop way before it was considered to be in the Jamaican tradition. So right. uh, so yeah, I, I tried to do that to him. And he kind of had some disagreements about that. And then, and then the, what, what are you going to disagree with? I mean, history is history. You got records in the 60s, Pig Meat Markham and others, who straight rap, <laughs> even the first rap. I mean, we, they, they, that's, not even, that's not even an argument at this it's, point. It, it, that's it, not it's it's really not. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, and my thing is just because motherfuckers see the truth and want to disagree with the truth, that don't stop the truth from being the truth. Yeah, yeah that's my thing too. And then uh, my second question is, um, why do people try to call you a charlatan when call you a charlatan or all these negative things when I've been following you since the Trayvon Martin um, incident, and you paid for a lot of black scholars' funerals, uh, like Dr. Blessing, yeah. um Dr. Yosef Ben Yakina when he was unfortunately, you know, in his issues. Right. And you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been following that and it to and it, it offends me when people try to call you a charlatan for that. Or they can those are those are non FBAs who do that every single time. Only people who do that are non FBAs. And it's a projection. That's what they do because they come from cultures where they have to scam and they have to be charlatans a lot of people project the negatives of their culture onto people like us especially me who's very well respected among foundational black americans because that's something that they got a real problem with the respect that i get among my people whereas in their homelands everybody's cutting each other's throat and over here my folks show me nothing but love. Foundational Black Americans show, and even other cultures too, not just Foundational Black Americans. Right. I, even when I go to the UK and even over in Africa, I get shown love. So a lot of the tether classes that they have a problem with that. So they have to project their scamming mentalities onto us. It's a one hundred percent projection. Okay. My track, yeah, my track record is impeccable. Yeah, so I don't know where people come up with that. And the last question yeah. I have is the American Maroons documentary. 
Is is it yeah. strictly going to be a, on a streaming service, or are you going to put put out DVDs? You know what? I'm I'm I'm, I'm definitely going to have it on a streaming service because it's going to be long. It's going to be we're going to have it in different episodes, like um, about four or five one hour episodes. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's gonna be it's a it's a good one. We're really taking our time with it, and this is our first time doing it like this because a lot of our films we have to cut a lot of stuff out. Right. So you know, let me do it on a streaming service so we don't have to cut all of this this good information. But what I was thinking, I was I, I might have a screening of it before we put it on the streaming service out here in Los Angeles when we get the museum popping, and we're working on getting that locked down now. I had a feeling you were going to do that, because you yeah. like to be in the vicinity of the areas and try to make sure no, nobody tries to sabotage it like they did you in UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was bullshit. Yeah, man. So, man, when we get this museum, and we, we, we got some shit we're working on right now, we have a big premiere there. And just really, really set it off. So it's going to be good, man. You guys are really going to enjoy the new documentary. Okay, and, and, and so I swear one last question is about the reparations thing. Yes, yes. Okay, for example, when you get it, and I believe you will, I believe everybody will get it. Yeah. How would the cash be distributed? Like, say, you're full FBA, so you should get all of it. What about the people who are half FBA? Yeah, the same thing. You, you get. We're not going to give you half a check. You know, it's, you know, if you come from a, a foundational Black American background, you get what everybody else gets. So, you know, it'll be it'll be fair like that. You know, you're not going to get like if you got a a little piece of FBA background, you're going to get thirty dollars or some shit. No, it's, it's <laughs> no, 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 no. Whatever your lineage is, you get whatever you know. Everybody in the lineage gets. All right. Um, uh, the five dollar FBA girl. I see you in here. I don't know why you want to get back on. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the five dollar FBA girl. I see you trying to get back in here. We, I don't really have anything to talk to you about, ma'am. I don't have anything to talk to you about, Miss Five Dollar FBA girl. Yeah, she's on her page talking about she's pan African and all that. Well, then knock yourself out, ma'am. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out, ma'am. Knock yourself out, but don't come in here projecting and lying. All right. Don't come in here projecting and lying. All right. And again, I'm looking at your pictures, and you do not look FBA, ma'am. I'm looking at some of your pictures now. And yeah, when you came in here lying, lying is a dead giveaway. That's a very bad look. Lying is a very, very bad look. All right. Hold on. And I'm, I see some other pictures. Hold on. I should post your picture. Up. I'm not going to post your picture up, ma'am. I, I'm not. There's a picture that's so not FBA looking. I'm looking at some of your pictures, ma'am. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I should post this picture up just to be petty. Um, hold on. Hold on one second. Because oh, I'm looking at her pictures now. Hold on. And I'm, I'm not going to be petty. <sighs> I'm not gonna be petty, ma'am. But I'm I'm looking I'm looking going through your pictures right now. And there's a picture of you and you you got on some some sandals and them feet. Ain't no way in hell you FBA with them feet. Ma'am, I I don't know if I should post your feet up here. Did she leave? Or oh, she got her ass up out of here when I said that. She bounced. She got out of here with the quickness when I said that. Nigga, if I show y'all a picture of this woman's feet, this woman ain't from nowhere but goddamn Cameroon somewhere. Ma'am, you need to stop. This woman's feet. I'm not going to even do it to her, guys. I'm not going to even do it to her. Ma'am, you should be ashamed of yourself. Should I do it? <laughs> should I be petty? <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I'm trying to fight the petty. Ma'am. Hold on. I'm, I'm about to do it. Damn that. I'm about to show y'all this woman's feet. Hold on one second. Come on. We're going to shame the damn devil tonight. You're not going to come in here lying. Hold on, lady. The one who's claiming she FBA. Hold the hell on. Ma'am, no. Hold on. I'm about to show this woman's feet. I'm not going to show her whole body. I'm going to show them feet. Hold on. Hold on one second. I'm going to put it on the Jumbotron in one second. Hold on. Now, ma'am, hold on. 
like, hold on. Let me put this on the Jumbotron. How'd I put it on? Here we go. There you go. Now, ma'am, with them big ass damn feet, you know good and well you're not FBA. Ma'am, your feet look like manatee flippers. You know good and well you ain't no damn FBA with them feet. Get back in here. Ma'am, you got Kenyan runner's feet, ma'am. Come in here spreading your lies with them damn feet. Lord, not a bad looking sister. No, no, I'm not hating, but damn, not a bad looking sister at all. But girl, girl, you got feet like, <laughs> you got feet like LeBron James. Stop it, ma'am. Yeah. Where you at? Get back in. Did she get out of this room altogether? She should know better. She's playing games. Ma'am, we can look and tell who's FBA and who's not FBA by little things like that. And you do not have FBA feed, ma'am. Ma'am, you got you mix with Moroccan and Ghanaian with them feet. Uh-huh. But but respect to you, ma'am. Let me take that off. I'm not gonna see the, don't come in here with lies. Do not come in here with lies, ma'am. You look like you can catch feet, fish with them feet. You can just dip your foot in the water and pull out some catfish. Uh, uh, uh. Let's get some who's this? Michael? Let's get Michael in here. Michael, hop on here, buddy. Michael, and turn your microphone on, Michael. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, Michael? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Where you from, Mike? Uh, Portland, Oregon, but uh, Portland. yeah, originally Miami. Miami. So that means Cuba. You're from Cuba, <laughs> right? No, nah, no. Nah. My dad's black. And your mom is what? White. Okay, okay, there you go. So what's on your mind, brother? Oh man, I'm just enjoying I'm enjoying it. listening to this. It's hilarious. Hey, go shout down. shout out to all, all the FBA members. Shout out to all you guys. It's a great movement. I'm just gonna listen. I'm not even gonna say anything. There you go, my man. All right, brother. You be good, brother. Yes, sir. All right, let's get some other folks in here. Okay. Um, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Um, raise your hand if you want. Leopold, I see you. I'm not getting you on, Leopold. I see you, though, Leopold. I'm not going to get you on here, but I see you. All right, let's go. Billy Ray Valentine, I see you. All right. I'm not going to get you on, Leopold, because all you do is come in here and rant with your self-hatred and project your self-hatred let's get um mario <clears throat> let's get mario mario zaglio whatever his name is let's get mario zaglio mario what's up mario mario Mario, let's get it together, bro. Hello? What's up, Mario? Hello? Mario, brother. What? Okay, brother, are you at work right now? Brother, go ahead and do your job, brother. Hi, hello? Hi, hi Tariq. Hello? Um, okay, Mario, you all right, brother? Yeah, Um, I just want to ask you a question, though. Okay, Mar, where are you from, Mario? Hello. Yeah, can I can I ask you a question though? Um, go ahead, Mario. Mario, before you ask the question, where are you from? It doesn't matter. Oh Lord, Mario. Okay, you're calling in between Uber Eat orders, and you're already hostile. But go ahead. What's on your mind? Here we go. <laughs> I just want to know why do you hate on um, Africans? Okay, stop, stop. 
you're going to have to leave the room, Mario. I don't. You you're like a broken record. You're so unoriginal. Do not come in the room with the same. Why do you hate African gibberish? Just deliver your Postmates, brother, and be happy. We're not thinking about you. We're talking about other stuff, and you're coming in here like the ugly chick at the club, talking about why everybody looking at my titties. Nobody's looking at your titties. Nobody's looking at you. Nobody's thinking about you. Okay, I just want to say. Um, I just want to say uh, one thing. Um, I don't care about. Mario. I don't care about whatever you're doing over there. It doesn't. It's not gonna help nobody in Africa or anywhere. We don't care about you. We don't need you to help us. We don't need you on, to do anything for us. Who said they were doing all that, dude? You got an imaginary conversation in your mind. Nobody's even thinking about you nor talking about you. Where did you get this imaginary conversation, sir? Turn your microphone on, but don't exit out of the Uber Eats app, though, because you don't want to lose your money. But go ahead, turn your microphone on. There you go. Hey, bro, stop, stop using us for views. Okay, we don't care about you. FBA, all that. You, you all don't got no power to do anything. So stop all that nonsense. Okay, and why are you calling me whining? Nobody is whining because you're not going to do anything. You have no power to do nothing. You can't stop nothing. Yeah. So you all you're over whining. there doing all that wishful thinking. Sir... Why are you whining to me? And you're not whining or helping your brethren up there in the Ukraine and Poland getting beat up right now. How come you ain't got no smoke for that? Turn your microphone on. Turn your microphone on. Uh, bro, like, come on, man. You're too old for this. Telling you, come bro. on, man. Y'all are too old. How come you're lady? not helping your people? How come you're not helping your people in dire straits right now in the Ukraine and Poland instead of galvanizing your nation to help your people? You all in our space whine into us, and we ain't even talking about you, nor are we thinking about you. Ain't that kind of weak? No, what is weak is you always mentioning us. Nobody mentioned you. We don't. Nobody's talking about you at all. You're saying us. I don't even know where you're from, but I kind of have an idea. Nobody cares. And this is another thing. When they come in the room, it's the, like I said, it's the ugly chick at the club pretending people are looking at them just so you can get attention. The only way you can get attention is to come in rooms where people are not even talking about you and you have to try to center yourself. Ain't that kind of sad? Derek, I'm telling you too old for this. I mean, like, come on, man. I'm telling you, stop doing this. Nigeria, everywhere, they're doing their best to get people out of um, Ukraine. So you need to stop okay. doing all this stuff. And so just just forget it. Sir, the only thing old is your flip flops, and they smell old too. And you use those old flip flops to run away from your homeland instead of fixing your homeland and doing the right thing by your people. Whining to us is weak, weak, weak. Do you want to have a weak legacy like this, sir? Um, I just want to say, like, about fleeing. Let's say, how did your um, how did your people get to U.S.? Dude, we built the U.S. We didn't get to it. We built it, sir. No, you said you said there were Africans that left, um, that came over to U.S. We, back in the day. We like, built, uh, we built the U.S., buddy. We didn't flee to it. We built it from scratch. We didn't leave somewhere to go somewhere better. We built the country from the ground up, sir. You fled and came over here to us, sir. And if you have a problem with that, you look in the mirror and talk to that person. Turn your microphone. Tariq, listen. Um, 
you said something about FBA that they have people that came here um that are natives, right? Okay. You're you're babbling and boring, so just go. I don't even want to hear whatever you have to say because it's just more mindless babbling and time wasting. All right, I said what I said, sir. Stop trying to center yourself in our circles when we're not even talking about you. All right, let's get a wake up Africa. Okay, here's wake up Africa. And I hope y'all woke this last dude up. All right. When they come in here talking about why you hating on us, uh, that's ugly girl at the club talk. What's up, wake up? All right, wake up. You want to turn the microphone on? All right, wake up. All right, turn your microphone on. All right. Wake up. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, my bad. I had you muted. My bad. I don't know why the mute button was on. Wake up. Go ahead. Turn your microphone on. Wake up. Yeah. I yeah, wait. That, yeah I was just going to say that it was from your end. Anyway, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to you, um, uh, Tarek. I was just going to ask. I just have a few questions. But first, I just wanted to ask, where where are you from? It's just a I'm from. I'm from here. I'm a full foundational Black American, sir. Have you done your DNA, Tariq? Just a question. I have. I have. And and what does your DNA say? It goes, some goes to West Africa, some goes to East Africa, mm -hmm. a small percentage goes to Europe, a little touch goes to Asia, mm -hmm. and a very small percentage shows the native here. So it's literally all over the place, which is most people's DNA, basically. When you mean... Your DNA goes to the native here. What do you mean? This is I'm not. I just I just wanted to just to learn more about what you're saying. What what, what does that mean? Yeah. What do you mean here? Yeah. It says on 23 and Me or my 23 and Me, it shows um, a percentage of Indigenous American. That's what it says on 23 and Me. So I don't know which tribal group or whatever, but I do know that you know there were Black Aboriginal people here. We we've always maintained that. So. That's where I am. And culturally, you know, I'm a foundational black American. As far as genetic wise, everybody's DNA will go to Africa, Europe and Asia. Everybody, everybody, you know, so that's that's very vast and it's so open ended. So it, it's rather really interesting. You see, the way I can see you. You know, or sorry, I hear the things you say about Africans. It, it, I think it just comes from a, pr a place of hate. Like, you know, it, it sounds as though did you feel that these people owe you so much and you don't have a way of, of getting to them or other than just, you know, coming out and just bashing at them for nothing. These people don't really, I don't think they really, they're really open. Okay, you're projecting. What you're going to do, y'all not going to come here and project a bunch of your cultural hatred towards us. That's you projecting. That is you projecting 100%. Y'all come in here saying the same nonsense. You're lying and projecting. The only people who have hate for cultures are the tether classes. And I'm not going to even say all of the people from parts of the motherland. It's the tether class who hate their own communities there. And you bring that hatred over here because that's why you fled. And you try to hide behind all African people. And this ain't about all Africans. It's about the tether class. The ones who sit over there lying, scamming, undermining the people, undermining the people, and then fleeing. You guys, and Dr. John Henry Clark talked about y'all how y'all play games. So you guys have been getting called out for a long time and you do not represent the African masses. So don't try to hide behind them. We're talking about a certain class of folks, sir. And it sounds like you comes from that. You come from that certain class. Turn your microphone on. To be honest with you, you see, this, this is so funny to me. This makes me laugh because I don't really see no reason for all this, Tarek. To be honest with you, it must like there is no how you can achieve all things that you talk about when you're coming from a place that you there's no power to it. You see, you don't stop, have, you're stop, stop. Now you're conning. This is, I want folks to listen to this. This is a con game they're running. 
this is a, a scam. A lot of these scammy ass people come over here. They didn't scammed everybody in their homeland and they think they can run this same scam game on us. They think that they're running some kind of Jedi mind trick. It, it doesn't work, sir. We're acknowledging our lineage, and that's what it is. We have a distinct ethnic group. You whining and complaining about that doesn't change anything. Us acknowledging our lineage, you're trying to flip that into, oh, you hate us. Why? Because now you're going to have to pull yourselves up. We're telling everybody to pull their own weight. And you're not going to try to shame us with projective troll tactics, because that's what this is. And you're not fooling anybody. And you're not going to have bad faith arguments, because I don't want to hear the same bad faith arguments regurgitated over and over again. Because all of that does is just give you cosmetic attention, and it's real weak. Now, if you want to talk about some real stuff, you talk about some real stuff. But what you will not do is regurgitate projective talking points, because I'm not going to sit here and just debunk projective talking points over and over again, because it's kind of tired and boring at this point. But I think if you want to have a conversation, it has to be a two-way thing. You don't the way it you don't have to be a, like it you, don't have to be a damn thing. I don't owe you a conversation. Let's get it straight. I'm a foundational Black American on my ancestral homeland that my foundational Black American family built, and we've maintained and we've done for ourselves for the last 500 years, maybe longer, with no help from nobody, especially you. I don't owe you anything. A foundational black American doesn't owe you anything. We've done enough. You're not at liberty to come in any room telling foundational black Americans what we need to do when we have to have a conversation. We don't have these are courtesy conversations that we have with you guys. And plus, I'm in here talking about other stuff. You came in and jumped in the room and centered yourself. We don't owe you anything. Let's be very clear. We're going to have to get this. If you want to have a real conversation, y'all don't really want to have a real conversation. You understand? Like my dude just hit me up now. You sitting up here talking about we need to have a conversation about us and we're the only people who've been helping you. Why are you not in these Ukrainian rooms having a conversation about why they're beating the folks up in Poland and the Ukraine? You ain't in those rooms. Why? How is that my problem, though? What has that, what has that got to do Interesting. with Interesting. So your people from the motherland getting beat up in Poland, that ain't your problem. But in my room whining because we're acknowledging our lineage, that's your problem? Because you made it your problem by jumping in they, here. That's interesting. They, don't, they get beat up in Poland, you said, uh, Tariq. You know what's going they, on with your folks up yeah, there. Yeah, I mean... They get beat up. People get beat up everywhere. Even in America, where you have people get shot for for for, for nothingness. You know what I mean? So and, and guess what we do? Is... And guess what? And guess what we do? And guess when people get shot, we start helping them. We start helping the families. When when our folks get shot over here, we get out here and we make the masses know about it. We get out here and try to help the families. In many cases, we're out here making funeral arrangements for the family. We get out here and we pool our resources together. We get our time together and we get out here and try to produce justice. What we don't do when one of our people gets shot or killed, we don't hop in no rooms talking about why y'all be hating on us. Why y'all people over there in Africa and the Caribbean be hating? We don't do that. Terry, see how that works? I, I don't care if you hate it doesn't bother me because that it doesn't add no feather to my to my shoulder. It doesn't mean anything what you say you want to be. It doesn't. It's not going to add anything to my achievement at all. It's just that I mean, for us to come on this platform, you sh it's a privilege to you know because the Asians are not going to come. Now here. you you just babbling, sir. You're not saying anything that makes sense. What all that babbling? Some of your energy can be used to help your folks up there in the Ukraine and in Poland now. The people up there stranded. Y'all government won't even help them. What's wrong with Tarek, you? Is that, is that your problem with African people? Is that your problem? 
How come you're not helping your folks, dude? Who told you that I've been helped? Haven't you seen videos? They told us they ain't been helped. Season? They have. They on TV saying, hey, we need some damn help. They are telling us. They're all on the news. They're all on the internet like, hey, we need help. They're whooping our asses up here. Our government won't even get us. They're walking around all around Europe right now trying to find a country to go to. And all of these white supremacists are targeting them right now. They're on the internet crying for help. They asked for help and help came. So you need help to ain't ask coming for a lot of them. Came. Then why are so many of them on the news talking about they need help? They don't have that, no money. That they don't have no early stages. Now you're making Derek. excuses. I'm not making no damn and this excuses. same failed mentality you want to bring over here among us. That's what we don't want. This same failed mentality that you had. This mentality you had, making excuses for failure, this is why you had to flee. Tariq, I'm, in a, I'm not in America. You're in the UK be... somewhere. Yeah, you're in the UK somewhere, sir. Yeah, I yes, know. I am. And I yeah, don't want to be in America. And you, and you ain't in your homeland. That's the point, sir. You're not in your homeland. Since you're already in Europe, why don't you go over there and help your damn folks in the I've got open. Europeans in my homeland as well. You talk as though you don't live in today's world, Tarek. What are you talking about? You just babble. Well, when you because I'm in, in 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 Europe doesn't mean that I've I've abandoned my homeland. You, yes, you, it does. That's not the way these things work. I've got you've got Americans in Nigeria as well. How many you of you? FD... You ain't going back home. Stop. Stop it. You're not Who going back. I told you that. I just came uh, back. You, I just no, came you. back from home. No, you, you ain't going I just nowhere. did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. But I just you did. Go... I'm telling you, I just did. Dude, you're going to stay over there in Europe chilling while you calling all the way over here. We ain't got shit to do with you. Why are you worried about us? You got, you I'm, call, you, Terry, you, I'm not worried. I worried. feel so. Why, why are you worried about us? You called us, dude. I feel sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't have any form of envy. I just feel sorry that you're being derailed. You're, you're like, you don't, don't, you don't, understand. dude. Don't worry about us. Go help your folks, nigga. Your folks are over there getting beat up in the Ukraine, all on the news. Help your folks. Listen to how you sound, dude. Derek, help. I see you. I see you as part of people that I have to help as well. I don't need your help, dude. If I need a Joloff recipe, I'll call you. But I don't need your help. You can't help me. But help your people. Help your folks who's in need right over there in Europe where you are right now. Now, now you're being petty. Ted. Now you're being petty. Now you're being petty. What help is Joloff? Your, help your people that's in Europe over there with you right now. They're right next door to you. Instead of helping them, you're calling 10,000 miles away to whine to me. And that's what I'm doing. I am helping them. I you don't know what I'm doing. You ain't doing nothing, dude. You're sitting here babbling. I, I had you sometimes tell to someone that the person was lying because you, you're they're babbling. saying something. Now you okay. Failed babbling tether talk. Go help your people. Don't be in here babbling. The people all on the news crying for help. This is what I'm talking about. Help your people. They need help right now. Lord, man. Go help your people, man. Y'all don't be on here whining to us. That's the problem. All right, let's get some more folks in here. Uh, who is this person? I think I had them on before. Jay Boogie. Jay Boogie, have I had you on here before? Look like he has some Moroccan numbers or Moroccan words on his thing. All right. All right, Jay. Or Quad who is this? Who are these people? I, I add y'all and then your name. Yo. Cardi Yo. What's up, Cardi? Not much. Uh, from uh south side of Chicago. You know. All right. Where's your family from? Uh we all uh no uh FBA. Uh -huh. Y'all sure? No, yeah, no. I'm a convert. I'm a 19. I just converted a couple years ago. Oh, okay. All right. What's on your mind? Uh, well, uh, I just wanted to ask. You know, I'm gonna get off. So, what? What? Uh, what 
can we do like to get like the younger generation to get more acclimated to FBA? And I'm gonna hop off. Yeah, you know, we can just chop it up with them and just let them know. We got to let people know their history. Just let people know their history. That's all we got to do. Let people know their history and let them know who they are. And, um, you know, let people know and understand how much of a unique group we are. We are a very unique group. All right. Now, let's get some more people in here. A couple of more folks. Um, who is this? C. Sega. Sega Saturn. Let's get Sega Saturn in here. Sega Saturn in here. Sega Saturn. That's your name. Sega Saturn. Turn your microphone on, bro. All right. Sega Saturn. Don't. All right. Let's get um two three four genius in here. Two three four genius. I turn that microphone on. Two, three, four, genius. Come on. I turn the microphone. Yeah. How is it, Terry? Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. What's going on with you? Yeah, everything good. We're, do, we're doing good here. Uh, I, I've been popping no. into your spaces uh for like a, a month now, and okay. um, you've really said a lot. You know, you've been talking so much. Some of them actually did true, but most uh, I find it hard to to believe. The truth is that like, Africa is having what? a lot of problems. I know this. Yeah. And um, there's so much disunity. You know, people are so tribalized here. People don't, they don't share pain. People lack empathy, as a matter of fact. So... It's a global problem. It's a it's a problem that can be fixed at the same time, but um, I think uh, there should be a roadmap because just talking here on spaces and um, having people happen, I don't think it it, it will change anything. It, it's it's a plan that should be put in place. The government, and if I say the government now, you might not like that, <laughs> but it's the truth. No, don't no, no, make me put music. <laughs> but the thing is, brother, look, you guys, you guys are calling up with all of the, you know, the the weird energy. Yeah. We're any, we're not talking about you guys. We're talking about other stuff here. You guys call up with this weird energy that you project. Y'all have to stop that projecting. Y'all project a lot of stuff from your culture onto foundation of Black Americans. And the truth be told, a lot of people from your culture, they're upset for the simple fact that we're acknowledging our lineage and you're taking that as an act of hostility towards you. And you got to see the, the flaw in that logic. That's it, why y'all hop in here talking about we hating on you simply because said, we're acknowledging our own lineage. It's it said, bro, it said if if. If that's a, it's a problem, but I can tell you from 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 a fact that most black uh, most Africans live in America. They are scared of Americans, you know. They like I have people there who, who, who complain all the time. Like FBAs, they don't like they don't like black people. They don't like Africans. Like they they have kids who are scared of going to school because they get bullied. They they call them ugly names. I mean. It's a vice for something. It's it's not it's not one side the way you you saying this thing. Dude, there are some dude. there are some FBAs who are not like you. Believe it. There are dude. some people who are nasty too. Okay, where do you live? Where in America do you live? I'm not in America. That's the funny thing. I'm I'm, I'm here in the motherland. I'm in Africa. You, you you still in Nigeria? No, I'm not in Nigeria. Uh, I'm in Africa, but not in Nigeria. Where are you at, man? Y'all, you're so ashamed of where you're from. Where are you does, from? Where does you does it matter? I'm in the continent. It does matter. Where, where it, do you it, live? It doesn't. If I say I'm in Africa, I mean, it's the white people who divide this continent and, and start calling names. Okay. We are one. It's, it's a continent. Oh, no. It's Africa. Stop babbling. Stop babbling. I want to know where you're from because it clearly don't sound, you can't be from here talking about the Africans are scared of us. That That doesn't make any sense. That they're gonna get beat up? What are you, what are you talking about? And uh, turn your microphone on, sir. Two, three, four. Yeah. I, 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 what I'm saying is that 
most and you're, Africans, and you're Nigerian. Your, your accent is Nigerian. You're Nigerian. I'm, of course, I'm an African. I never said I'm an I'm an FBA. I'm an American. You're Nigerian. I'm in the continent. Okay, yeah, you can. You're Nigerian. Your accent is Nigerian. Okay, like I said, I'm an African. You can say I'm Nigerian. It's it's fine. I'm not going to dispute that. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, say that. Don't be ashamed of your shit, man. Own up to I, it. I, I'm, I'm found. I can never be ashamed of that. All right. Well, you act like it. I'm no. not. I wear my lineage. I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of where I'm, where I'm from. I shouldn't. But be. but you said that Africans are afraid of us. Yes, because I, I I have friends in America too, and there's this prejudice. There, there's this culture of uh, FBAs always looking down on on, on Africans. You know, sir, they call them. Sir. In New York, do you know how many crimes immigrants commit in New York? Some of these heinous crimes that they commit in New York? I mean, every day. And I'm talking about almost all of these big, high profile crimes coming out of New York are damn near exclusively coming from immigrants. Not one of these people are FBA in these crimes. There was a dude from Ghana who smeared feces on somebody in a damn subway this week in New York. Okay, that's terrible. We don't do shit like that, foundational black Americans. But the thing is, here's the bad part, though. When they come over here and do all of these crimes, they okay. don't separate them and say it's a Ghanaian immigrant or it's a Nigerian immigrant or a Ugandan immigrant. This there was one. There was another. Man. There was another immigrant who punched a, a kid in New York a couple of days ago. They're doing some of the most heinous crimes imaginable. There was another immigrant down in Texas who ran over a sister and then hit her with a damn baseball bat. Y'all scared of us? Really? I'm not scared. I'm, I'm really scared. trying to wrap I'm really trying to wrap my head around that. You're scared of us uh, with all the drug dealers. Where are the, the dope is coming from a lot of these immigrant groups? You are, you, are, you, Tariq, are, you, are you trying to tell me uh, it's it's uh, Africans pushing drug in America? Is that is that true? Yeah. Not from Mexico, not from the south of America, not that. Africans. Yes, y'all bring drugs over too. Yes, this For big real? drug, but yes, yes. There's big drug busts with Africans, Caribbeans, Jamaicans especially, Haitians. A lot of people come over and commit a lot of drug crimes, majorly. Oh, so that's how a lot of tr the, the truth be told. That's how a lot of drugs get in the community through black immigrants, sir. Oh, that's not that's not right. Yeah, that's not right. Even in the '80s, the Jamaican posse and the, the shower posse, rather the, these Jamaican cats. And bring they bring the violence with them. At least the black drug dealers didn't have all that damn violence associated with them. You had Tootie Reese and people like that. Even Freeway Rick didn't have a lot of violence associated with them. But he was an immigrant, a um, Hispanic immigrant, bringing the, them to him. But y'all bring a lot of that degeneracy with you. If we're gonna no, be no. real, if we're gonna, if, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, if we're gonna be don't real. Don't generalize. Don't generalize everybody. Like the, we, we're not. We're different. We humans, we can never be the same. Like you, but, are, if you have siblings, but, uh, your but, siblings. But okay. are... No, no, no. We we got to deal with this. Y'all scared of us? That's interesting. We got to deal with that. How are you scared of us, and you scared of our kids or whatever? And y'all got whole child soldiers running around your neighborhoods with machine guns and machetes. Right now in your homeland, sir. How are you scared of us, and these kids are running around? with guns and clips, just running around willy-nilly in your neighborhoods over there, sir. How does that work? I want to appreciate you uh, giving me the space to, oh. to just my, my, my little uh, concern. I, I grew up listening to him. Boy, he didn't want to answer that, did he? He didn't, didn't, he didn't, did he sidestep that? Notice how he sidestepped all that. Okay. What did you ask me? I didn't get that, please. Okay. You didn't hear what I said about the child? No, I didn't. Are you not afraid of all the child soldiers running around over there in your homeland, sir? No, there are no there are no child soldiers anymore. It happened in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and other countries. It's not happening like that anymore. Yeah, it is, sir. Yes, it is. You have kids <laughs> running around over there with machetes, chopping folks up, beheading people, and you you're scared of us. <laughs> it's not happening like that, Derek. It's oh, it's like not. That it's not. I just saw some stories a day or so ago over there 
where some kids chopped up somebody. Oh, 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 oh wait, precisely. <laughs> Africa, Africa's got like 54 oh, countries. Lord. Can you be precise but, a bit? But now we now you weren't even precise about where you're from, sir. I you mean, said you're continent. African. You said you're yeah. African, sir. So that means you represent all of it. So all yes, of it uh, okay. I, I, rep- I do. I, I'll take that. I represent. I represent there you go. So represent the degenerate behavior, and don't sit here talking about you yeah, you're scared of us. My dude just hit me up. They'll be cutting babies out of women's stomachs over there. Some of the most heinous crimes and violence imagined. Terry crime is universal. Please. But don't there's sit here drugs, talking about there's you. There's gang banging us. in America. There's F, don't don't be, don't sound like that. Like crime is only dude. peculiar to Africa. Dude. Why are you sounding like that, my man? Dude, because you sitting up here talking about y'all scared of us. No, I'm really? not scared. Scared of what? You're the one who said y'all were scared. I'm of I'm saying us. some Africans in America are facing that, that this kind of uh, situation. Nobody's doing. They call their kids ugly. The kids can't go to school. What well, are they ugly? Dead. Everybody gets called names, sir. Maybe they they're coming to school looking funny and they're getting clowned, sir. Damn. Oh, y'all get y'all okay. get y'all y'all get and and and, getting, and, and, and they, 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 they just got this thing like you're above getting roasted. Yeah, you're gonna get clowned. Everybody gets clowned in school. It's called the dozens. It's part of the culture. Everybody gets ribbed. But you have so much insecurity, y'all take it real personal. Everybody gets ribbed in school. Maybe okay. even, can maybe, I say you're maybe you now. got ugly fucking kids who got roasted, and they got some game from it, and then got better later. Nigga, everybody gets roasted. You're not getting a pass. Everybody's gonna get roasted. So that ain't no excuse. And ain't nobody harming you. Ain't nobody doing nothing to no immigrants over here. We're helping them more than anything, sir. Now, two, three, four, two, three, turn your mic on. Turn your mic Yeah. On. Okay, yeah, now. my mic is on now. Uh, okay. what, what is the solution to, to all of this, uh, this problems you, you've been talking about? What, what's, your, what's your solution? What are you putting, chipping in? Everybody. Okay, first of all, the solution is stop babbling. That's one. And number two. I'm not babbling. You are babbling. You are babbling. I'm speaking. You're babbling because you're talking in circles. That's one solution. Solution two, fix your homeland so that people don't have to flee in mass. Solution three, help the black folks from your homeland that's up there in the Ukraine and Poland being um, disrespected and abused by the white supremacists up there. You guys got okay. all the smoke for well, us. Biden, even Biden couldn't help Ukraine. Why what? Biden himself, your president, couldn't even help the country. What do you mean he couldn't help the country? Because they were they were asking them to join NATO and then projecting like, okay, we are by your side. Whatever happens with you and Russia, we will cover you up. But the United States chickened out. NATO chickened out. So unfortunately, don't even bother, unfortunately, don't bother about Africa. Okay, okay. Unfortunately, Biden and his administration, they're about to give some of these Ukrainians all types of billions of dollars. I think they've already proposed six billion and they're about to bring them races over here. So we as foundational black Americans, we're preparing for that because let me tell you something. We ain't gonna let these random um, white supremacists do all the stuff to us that they're doing to the brothers and sisters over there. We ain't letting that shit happen at all. So we're kind of watching from that perspective. But what are you doing to help your folks, sir? You up here talking about some damn Biden. What are you doing to help your people that's stuck up there right now? There's plans in place. They've been okay. ever Thank you. There's always a plan in place. Nothing. That means nothing, sir. Thank you so much. Nothing. When you start asking them about what they're doing to help their homeland and build over there, well, it's being done slowly. There are plans in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Go back to the palace of Zamunda, nigga. They talk that Zamunda talk. And come in our room centering themselves, talking about somebody's hating on them. We ain't thinking about you. Oh, man. Okay, this brother's forehead right here shows that he's from most likely... Somalia. Okay, let's get this brother here. Um, 
Turn your microphone on. Um, no frills. No frills. Turn your microphone on, bro. And let us know what part of Somalia you're from, because I can tell from your forehead that you're from Somalia, bro. No frills. Turn your microphone on. All right. There you go. Oh, am I on? There you go. What's up, man? What's up, man? I mean, you start this out with disrespect, man. I ain't got no disrespect for you, bro. There's no disrespect. So you, you are you are from Somalia, right? For sure, man. Proudly, man. There you go. So I wasn't wrong. There wasn't no disrespect. I just knew. <laughs> there wasn't disrespect. All right, man. Let me just open this up with saying... Uh, no, just be clear. No disrespect. You see? It, it is what no it is. Disrespect. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. See, y'all stop taking stuff personally, no, you, see? You got some preconceived not- notions, man. No, but I was right on that one, though. I was right. I could tell, and that was okay. That's okay. All like right. if I go there, y'all can y'all can look at me and tell that I'm a foundational Black American, and I can clearly tell you're from Somalia. But and it's all love. What's on your mind? I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on your uh, your program here, man. You seem to be getting the people together. But uh, okay. I mean, I can't ignore the uh, the negative uh, connotations. Well, the negative connotations are coming from a lot of these non-FBA people. That's where the negative connotations are coming from. So what exactly is an FBA, man? Okay, you if you've been listening to my spaces, you know exactly what an FBA is, sir. You know exactly so, what so, about uh, an FBA is not a uh, descendant of Africans who were brought over to the United States by the Amistad? It's, it's like niggas it's that a, were just homegrown and Am- shit. The Amistad went to is a Spanish ship that was going to the Caribbean. The Amistad wasn't even coming here, sir. Okay. Okay. Amistad. That's a Spanish ship, and that's why it was a big deal because they hijacked the ship and they ended up coming here. Most of the people brought from Africa were taken to the Caribbean and South America and Central America. A very small percentage came here to North America, sir. So. So you're not from that. that you're not from that boat. Be, no, I'm not. Or any other. But boat. be that as, it, um, some of my people are probably from some boat, but a lot of black people were already here, and when the people from the boats got here, their Africanness was stripped from them, and they became a whole new ethnic group. Okay, that's how ethnic groups are formed. They go places. They're forced places. They migrate places based on disasters, man-made occurrences, natural disasters, or whatever, and that's the thing that will form a certain ethnic group. And our experience caused us to have a new ethnic identity. And we are foundational Black Americans, and our lineage is different from everybody else's. Even though we are Black, like you and other people in the diaspora, we still have a different lineage. Does that make sense? It does, man. There you, there you go. Uh, now, do you understand what a foundational Black American is now, sir? I'm I'm trying to Google it, man. It's like you're the only uh, uh, resource that comes up uh, using this term. Yeah, other people. So I figured I had to ask you directly. Right. Well, other people are using it now. Other people are using the term, and the term is becoming more popularized now. But the lineage is always there. It's not a group. It's a lineage. It's a lineage identification. Okay. All right, man. Have now, a good night. you have a good night, too. And, brother, put a stocking cap all over that forehead. <laughs> all right. We don't want to let that forehead get on the pillowcase. Uh, all right. Okay. Who is, who is this young lady? Okay. She got a bunch of flags on her thing. All right. Now we have a non FBA lady here. Hi. Hello. Yeah. I'm British. Hello, how I'm are very you? Very well. So before you start, I'm not I'm not an immigrant or anyone that's upset with you. I'm just trying to figure out exactly because I have to a certain degree not followed you, but I'm aware of kind of the connotations that you're giving off in regards to immigrants and black Africans. But I'm thinking in a five year, I don't know, plan, what is the outcome of what you're doing right now aside from being divisive? Okay. Well, that's a bad faith argument. It's not even a real question. What do you mean? 
and that, because you said what's the outcome besides being divisive that's a statement and a projection no, no, that's a question so my my understanding is right now what you're doing is quite divisive so i'm saying correct how so that. how so, how so? <laughs> we're all black do you think people in the world look at us and go that's an angolan that's a nigerian that's a somalian they see a black person so you sitting here being okay. like us and them i'm trying to figure out who's us and who's them it's us. um ma'am Ma'am, why do you have five flags on your profile? Because I'm an Angolan, Jamaican, British-born woman. I don't have five flags, my darling. Okay. My bad. Okay. The three. You got three. I do. Hey, well, yeah, you got four, but one is the OBGT flag. That's right. But, all right. So, Angolan and all of that. My dad? Isn't that divided? Is that divisive? What do you mean? Is that divisive? My dad is Angolan. I can't do anything about that. And my mom's Jamaican. What can I do about that? And I'm born in Britain. What can I do about that? However, okay, what so I can I'm do about it is not then I'm, turn around. I'm a foundational black American. What can I do about that? Turn your microphone on, ma'am. Outside of yourself, I've not actually heard this term. And I have actually looked it up. And I'm literally saying. Okay. Ma'am, we're talking about a lineage. Foundational Black American is what you would also call an African American. Some people would call Negro, but we're descendants of slaves in America. Okay, that's a lineage. And I can't do anything about that. That's my lineage. You have a lineage. I have a lineage. So why are you complaining about my lineage? I'm not complaining, darling. You're complaining and ostracizing your own black people because for whatever reason, you've decided there's a difference between it's a bus, it's a boat stop. So essentially... Wait a minute. You're doing the same thing then. You just designated your group. But when I designate mine, all of a sudden it's a different boat stop. So how does that work, ma'am? It's not designation. It's nationality. I'm right. not saying... Right, 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 right. We are... A nation within a nation, okay? Foundational Black Americans, we are an ethnic group, a nation within a nation. Right? Well, I'm actually finding it hard to make my point because you keep muting me. Um, because you're not going to talk over me because what we're going to have here is order. We're going to take it very slow and we're going to have order. We are an ethnic group that's different from other groups even though we're Black. You have an ethnic group that's different from other groups, even though you're black. No, I have a nationality group that's different. My ethnic group is the same as yours. My ethnic group is the same as everybody else that's listening in on this. Um, your nationality is all in the air. What is your nationality? You have a bunch of different flags in countries that you're not even in, ma'am. No, you're confused. My nationality is British. I'm a British citizen with heritage and lineage from an Angola and a Jamaican parent. You're confused, darling. I know exactly where I am. Ma'am, you're all over the place. So you don't really have a nationality. If you got five different nationalities, you have none. Your nationality goes wherever the wind goes, ma'am. Darling, my nationality is British. I don't understand why you don't think British people exist. Uh -huh. My nationality is British. Ma'am, that's... But ma'am, that's where y'all fled to. Y'all became British nationals. You understand how that works, ma'am? Um, actually, we were a lot longer here free than you guys were. We came with the Commonwealth. We came with Windrush. We came with other implications of boating. And yes, we came with the Commonwealth and slavery. However, it was abolished here before it was abolished in America. So what I'm saying is this doesn't matter. This is Ma'am, you were colonized. So stop all of this stuff. You were, you were colonization, ma'am. You're hollering about nationality and you're victims of colonization, just like... Baby, <laughs> we all are. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Calm down. We were victims of slavery. Please and stop muting me, because it's really no, hard no, to have an action. No, 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 because you're going to listen. You're going to listen. You're not going to babble, ma'am, because you got all of these different flags. You're all over the place. Even got an LGBT flag, and that's another thing. Y'all treat LGBT like that's a different nationality within itself as well. So you all over, you wherever the wind goes. Darling, okay. I'm okay. going to say it one more time. You talking over me and trying to discern the point. This is my space. So we're going to go at a pace that is conducive to the tone that I set, ma'am. This is not a willy-nilly type of thing. 
where you do back in your homeland, everything is up in the air and chaotic where people have to flee. Okay? They're going to listen. So, right. ma'am, right. I'm not a fleer. We don't come from but a you lineage. Are, you're... We, we don't come from a lineage of fleeing, ma'am. Okay? I'm a foundational black American. Ten toes down. My family's been here, built the country, never fled, never ran, never will. That makes us unique and different, ma'am. Okay? That is not divisive or hating on anybody. That's us acknowledging our unique and exceptional lineage on the land that our family built. So you think as a black American, there is a unique lineage to be uh-huh. somebody that is a, what is it? A foundational black American, which uh-huh. is essentially just a person who derived from slavery, who mm-hmm. landed in America, who has now got lineage. Hold on. Yeah, I know she's British, you know. We didn't land in America. Let's get it straight, dear. We built America. We built the United States. We didn't just land here. It's not like what you did. You left somewhere raggedy and went somewhere better. Much different. We didn't leave somewhere raggedy and go somewhere better. We had to build something better. You and what I'm that? saying is, you do understand, like with slavery, there are multiple multiple boats. Some went to Britain, some went to the transatlantic, some went to the West Indies, some went to the Americas. So when I say it's a boat stop, I'm not saying anything divisive in a way of like America. It's more than a boat stop, ma'am. Only a very small percentage of that boat stop stopped here in North America. Only 3% of the people brought from Africa were brought to North America. There were many black indigenous people who were enslaved here and mixed in with African people. And when the African people from that 3% got here, their Africanness was stripped from them, thereby making them a totally different group. And that's where we are. We are so what I'm saying is there is no African or black African American person that has originated from the indigenous lands of America. The native indigenous Ma'am, okay, you don't know history and you're babbling. First of all, ma'am, there were black indigenous people on this land. Yes, there were, and this has been proven, and this is not anything open for debate. Secondly, when black people got here from Africa and mixed in with those indigenous people, that became a totally different new ethnic group, which are foundational black Americans. Does that make sense to you? Sorry, you keep cutting me off, so my sentences sound silly. I understand, obviously, there are black people there. However, that's the Sioux, that's different kind of, they're not actually black in that regard. So when you say that people basically mixed with like Africans that were enslaved and created a new ethnic group, it's all black. I don't understand what you mean. And essentially, like I said, this is a... So are all of those tribal groups in your motherland of Angola, are they all black? My motherland is England. So essentially, my motherland is Africa, all of Africa, because I'm a black woman. So I take all parts of it very proudly. Then why are there a gazillion different tribal groups over there then? Can you please let me finish the sentence without muting me? No, what I'm you, saying is, is why you, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you answer my question, ma'am. All I'm saying is I'm going to deflect. No, there's a gazillion different tribal groups in your homeland. Now, why is that okay? But when we look at our distinct ethnic group, that's a problem. Okay, she got her up. She got up out of here. All right. Yeah, we're not going to babble here. We're going to speak truth to power. She thought she was. What they want to do is babble and deflect, just talk in circles. And then when they say something and it contradicts itself, they want to go somewhere else. My dude just hit me up. So shout out to Michael. It's like 2000 different languages there. My dude said, come on. Yeah, ma'am, you're not going to babble and then talk about we're divisive and then they talk that boat ride nonsense. We all black, but y'all got a gazillion different ethnic groups in your homeland. But then we're supposed to, oh, we all black. No, 
we're a distinct group. And so notice it's only a problem when foundational black Americans understand our unique heritage. Notice that, family. That's what this is all about. So many people feel entitled to picking our culture and living off of our culture and stealing our culture and wearing our culture and claiming our culture. When we put a gate around our culture, they take that as an act of hostility. Foundational Black American culture has been holding up everybody else's joints, man. And they take it as an act of hostility when we gatekeep our own culture. Very interesting dynamic. Who is this? Let's get um, Nikki Darling. And yeah, that lady with the eye. I really wanted to get on her about that flag, too. That's another thing. All right. What's up, Nikki? Hey, Tariq. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick question. I got my kids, so I won't be long. Um, in four mm -hmm. years... It'll be 500 years since the first Africans touched base in America. I was just wondering if you was planning something special for that 500 year anniversary or what you were planning to do. That's all. Oh, that I don't know. And plus, we were there were black people over way before 500 years ago. So so that's another thing. But let's get um the robes. I know this guy's in Europe somewhere with a name like this. V robes. What's your name, bro? Hey, what's good? I'm Rob's. Now I'm just I'm just chiming in and listening. That's all. Oh, okay. You you requested to be a speaker, so I don't know why. Did you do it by mistake? Uh, possibly. I I just joined in. I wasn't like I joined in the in the middle of the conversation you were having with the lady that just left. Uh, so I wasn't quite understanding the context, but I my finger did slip. Sorry about that. Oh, all right. And where are you from, by the way, bro? Um. I'm from Montreal. Oh, yeah, in Canada. Okay. All right, man. Yeah. Well, you good, man. Go ahead and get, get all that moose boo-boo out the driveway. <laughs> all right, bro. All right. Let's get uh, Mike. Mike. White Mike. Let's get Mike in here. Mike, hop on. Hi, uh, Tarek. Um, I'm a first-time uh, listener. <laughs> Is it Tariq? I'm yeah, sorry. Man. Tariq, there you go. Well, you said that shit white as hell. That's the whitest pronunciation. He said Tariq. <laughs> this motherfucker's Tarak. Hi, Tarak. <laughs> Tariq. I like the police. Sorry, Holy shit. I almost, I almost emptied my pockets when you said that shit. Now, hey, what's on? Where you from, Mike? Where you from? Originally, I'm from the safe suburbs of Philadelphia. That's where I grew up. All right. But I now live in Southern California, one of the, uh, one of the uh, beach cities of uh, Los Angeles. Oh, there you go. There you go. So what's on your mind, Mike? Well, um, are you the same, Tariq, that debated Jared Taylor? Yes, I did. I debated Jared Taylor. When I, and, and, you know, after that debate, Jared Taylor got deplatformed from everything. I think yeah, he did. Jared yeah. Taylor, yeah, he got deplatformed from everything after that. But yeah, well, but what about it? What's up? I think I've I've listened to about 10 minutes. I'll have to go and watch the whole debate. Um a lot of people liked it. Uh, what's your take on Jared Taylor? What's your opinion of him? Jared Taylor, he's an honest white supremacist. That's my take. He's a very honest white supremacist uh, about certain things. Um, when he gets into the IQ thing and stuff like that, that's, you know, I, I debunked a lot of the stuff that he said about IQ. Now, what's your take on How do you feel about Jared Taylor? Well, I like him. I'm a... Uh, I am a paleo conservative myself. I'm a big fan of, of his and John Derbyshire and uh, the whole V Dare and uh, American Renaissance. Um, oh, okay. So, so, do you believe in the IQ, the whole bell curve thing that black people are inherently have, they have in, inherent low IQs and all that stuff? Well, I believe that whites have lower IQs than East Asians and Ashkenazi Jews. OK, um, I think there's a spectrum there, but uh, I wanted to ask, are you going to debate him again or do you plan on debating any of the other uh, race realists in his group? Um, I don't know, but I'm, well, let's deal with you right now. Let's talk with you since you, you kind of represent that. Um, you said that you believe that whites have lower IQs than Jews and Asians. 
but do black have black people have lower IQs than all of them, according to your ideology, sir? No, I think uh, Australian Aboriginals are lower than Africans. And I think that uh, African-Americans are higher than uh, just pure Africans. Oh, okay. Um, now, with Jared Taylor and him and other white supremacists or race realists, I'll be respectful in that sense. They also said something to the effect of there's some type of gene that makes black people more violent. Is that something you subscribe to? I, I don't think it's a particular gene. I think it's a it's a subset of a uh, of a genetic code uh, that w would influence someone's temperament. Hey, what's that subset? Well, I, I couldn't name it in particularly, but uh, but just a general sense of where would where would this subset come and be placed into black people? How would black people get that subset? Well, it's not that it's placed there. It has to do with evolution. Oh, okay. So how did we evolve into having that? What made us evolve into having a violent um, natural disposition? Well, it's just the selective pressures of your environment over time. Hmm. Like what? Like what? Well, being closer to the equator, um, being closer to the equator and having selective pressures in that environment, as opposed to someone uh, who had pressures in a region that was colder. That's just a general example. Look, I'm not a scientist, but I have but, a cursory but, knowledge of this. But wouldn't there be more pressure in a colder environment that would foster a violent temperament more so than a tropical environment like the equator where everything is in abundance there would be no need to be violent in an equator tropical environment where you can get natural resources, food and vegetables and everything right there at your disposal. Whereas if you're in a cold environment, everything is hostile. The food is not plentiful. So there's competition. So you have to kill your competition. So a more violent temperament will emerge from a colder environment, right? Well, the theory goes that you need more cooperation to survive in a colder environment. You can be more autonomous and independent as, a, as an individual, as a human, in a, uh, in a warmer environment. Uh, in a colder one, you would need more cooperation, so you'd have to have a temperament uh, and a comportment that would uh, get along with your fellow man in that region. That's the theory. But the thing is, but based on the reality in... Europe, we're going back into your, your your home country, man. It was extremely violent. The Neanderthals and those people living in those caves, and they were getting into cannibalism crazy up there. So it was very violent if you look at it from a historic standpoint, sir. Well, I guess you'd have to take uh, a whole timeline and just measure the carnage and, and the history and events, put them side by side, and have it borne out uh, who was more violent. But uh, aside from uh, aside but, from that, I guess but, I guess you but, can hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. you can't go by that. Now, if we're going to go side by side about who's more violent, nobody in recorded history is more violent than white supremacists, sir. Can you name who who's more violent than white supremacists? But uh, Terry, couldn't you just look at the crime statistics? Crime to statistics, where, sir? Here in the United States. Okay. What about them? Well, uh, if you compare uh, non-white violence to uh, violent acts to uh, white criminality, you'll see per capita that non-whites commit more violent crime. No. What happens is in a system of white supremacy, white people get a certain level of immunity from law, meaning they don't get punished the same way black people do. This is why you have a Cal Rittenhouse and a Zimmerman and other white supremacist suspects who go out here and kill people and they get slaps on the wrists. Okay. I, you know, I think this would get tedious if we just keep circling back. Uh, I, this is a war of attrition that I'm not going to win and I, I don't have any interest in winning. But I did want to ask you this, Tariq. We're just, we're just talking facts, sir. That's all. Just I hear you. I hear point taken. Um, as a black business owner, do you think you should be allowed to hire all black employees? Should I be allowed to hire? I, 
I don't understand well, that question. What is o- that? Only, only black employees. As a black business owner, should you be allowed to hire only black employees? I don't even understand that question. I hire whoever's the best for the job, sir, which is what I do. I hire everybody at my employment. But if you wanted to just hire based on race, should you be able to hire just all black? Um, I would, that wouldn't be fair and equitable, but it happens anyway, because, you know, the common law of white supremacy, the only people who do that really are non-black people, black people. We don't have any type of racial insecurity. So we kind of welcome everybody in. Um, whereas people in the dominant society, especially white supremacist society, because of the racial insecurity, they have to hoard the resources for their group in order to have some kind of psychic survival mechanism going on. So, but with a very interesting question, why, why, why did you ask that question? Well, I, well, because I think in my opinion, we should be allowed to do that. Uh, it, was that a yes on your part? You should be allowed to hire all blacks if you wanted to. No, no, you should. Well, no, I don't think you should hire one race of people if other people are qualified. Okay. Yeah, you know, especially when you, you can say that if you live in a system where you control the economics and white supremacists, they control the economics of our society, unfortunately. So when you want gotcha. to, yeah, when you want to hire only white people, unfortunately, that leaves us out. And we, when we try to start our own businesses, the white supremacists when you're in your community, they destroy our businesses, they destroy our communities, they build freeways and burn our our Tulsa's down. So that's a problem. Uh, Tariq, now that uh, they have spaces on this Twitter, uh, maybe you want to debate Richard Spencer. Do you have any interest in that? I've debated Richard Spencer before, and it took me 15 minutes for him to get off the phone. <laughs> is that is that on YouTube? It's on YouTube. Look it up. He got off the phone very, very quickly. I debated him years ago. And even with Jared Taylor, he had, um, what's his name? Um, um, baked Alaska there to kind of troll for him to kind of deflect you know the whole bunch of troll flecking is what what I call it so yeah when they want to have a real debate that'll be great without the trolling and all the silly stuff but um yeah I would be you know I don't uh, that's another thing with white supremacists they like to try to tap out by trolling so when they start trolling that's that's a tap out so all right. Well, I'll, I'll watch for that if you have another one. Maybe debate Nick Fuentes. That would be no, a good he one. Had, he asked me to debate, and he's a troll. When you get him in, <laughs> you back him up in the corner, they start trolling. Trolling is a defense mechanism that many white supremacists like to use to tap out because they understand the gibberish they're talking is nonsensical, and they can't logically stand on any of it. So yeah, I would have All right, Tariq. And a real well, very thing. good talking with you. All right, Mike. You be good out there, okay? You too. Black power, brother. All right. Okay. We had a a real live white supremacist in here. All right. That is very interesting. That is very interesting. <laughs> oh Lord, he did he really want to go there about violence? Uh, he didn't. He that's why he wanted to get. You, they can't have a real conversation, dude. He didn't. If he really wanted to go there about violence, man, stop. Stop. Don't talk to me about no damn violence. And you got white nations right now bombing each other right now in your motherland. Man, stop it. All right, let me get one more call. I've been on here for a long time. Damn, I've been on here for a long time chopping up with y'all. How many of y'all in here? Okay. Raise your hand if you want to get on, family. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Am I still trending up here? Okay. See, my name is still trending on Twitter. Unless uh, Brian, let me get Brian um, Food. Brian Food. I right, hop on Brian Food. Whatever your name is. Brian, hop on, brother. You hear me, guys? Thank you, thank you for creating the space. Um, some interesting conversations. I'm, I'm, I'm in the UK. Um, from uh, my my parents were from the Caribbean, from Jamaica. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, 
oh, the, the last speaker, um, some of the things he said. Oh, all I would say is I, I put a tweet out not long ago, which is the history of violence in the world um, over the last 4,000 years. It's a, anybody can just Google that and they will find it. And there are so many dots in Europe. Um, the whole map is whited out in Europe from the amount of dots of war. So I would implore anyone just to do a quick Google search of that, the, the history of violence over the last 4,000 years. It was an article done by one of the major newspapers. And it, show, oh, it yeah. shows Europe, it shows the colonization wars in America when the Europeans came over and started fighting to ge genocide the, the native Indian people. Um, and obviously in Africa as well, the colonial wars there as well. So, um, and then obviously they went into the Middle East to get oil and resources to fund their industrial revolution. But but that's that's not what I wanted to ask. Um, what I wanted to ask is, um, I support the reparations movement and I definitely support the idea of reparations in, in the United States. 40 million uh, black Americans, as I understand it, um, is, is the number today, uh, roughly, of the yeah. population. Now, I don't know how many that would um, translate into foundationals um, as the movement goes. Um, the bigger question what I'm asking is, I see myself as a Pan-Africanist. Um, yeah. yeah. But, um, and I had a conversation the other day with somebody who was a part of what was originally ADOS and now foundational uh, black, and they would. I said I support the um, the 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 call for reparations. I hundred percent, thousand percent, million percent uh, support that call. But I did say to them that is also a wider call because obviously we have CARICOM as well. And then he was trying to create a dichotomy between CARICOM saying they're not supporting us and rah rah. But my point is, I think everybody needs to get paid. Right. So if that starts in America, that starts in America. But in terms of Pan-Africanism, my issue is, is this, is this, I study economics, I invest in different countries um, and I, I support um, the black space, no matter where it is, the diaspora, I support the continent, I support the, the struggle in the US, I support the struggle against apartheid in South Africa and I support the independence movement um, for the Caribbean to go independent and for um, the uh, the uh, African continent to go independent. And there's a reason for that, because I believe we are, as a people, dis despite which diaspora we're in, um, I believe that can, we have to be connected because there's a bigger picture at play. And the bigger picture is, um, it become, comes down to land and resources. And whether, you, whether those land and resources are held within white supremacist nations or whether we then look at the continent and um, say that the land that land belongs to us, no matter where we're scattered by slave ships, or even if you say, I know the, the people talk about the people being there before slavery in America. Uh, there's um, a book called They Came Before Columbus, and it, it talks about you know people traveling to the, to the Americas and migration before slavery, right? So I, I pick up on some of that. Um, but my point is, even if you followed the there's a lot of the genome mapping going on in the world at the minute. But even if, if you follow like this, this, this white supremacist who was just on said the Aboriginals are um, in, a, in, a, in, um, in uh, Australia or sub in, in terms of their brain capacity, their sub capacity. Uh, and then he, he, he taught that their DNA strand emanates from, from India. Right. So this is what's coming out. This is why their hair is quite straight. Um, so that is where their genome is supposed to emanate from. Originally, I used to think they look more African. Um, yeah, but my point is, it's about resources. If you thank, thank you so much, brother. Y'all got to land that plane. You got to land the plane, here, brother. All right. Thank you so much for your input, brother. Let me get let me get some more people in here. All right. All right. My man was I was just waiting on him to give me a space to, to kind of address some of his stuff, but he was just kind of going on and on and all over the place. So, all right, let's get the indie, the independent Muslim. Yes. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, um, I have a question for you, but I need to, uh, uh, give you some background, uh, on me. I was born in Syria. I immigrated to the United States in, uh, at the age of 17 in 1985 uh, I'm considered white. Uh, I, I fit in with the white people. They accept me much more than the black people. Um, 
and I've had experiences in college when I dated somebody who's black and, and all the black guys in my college had an issue with it. But my question to you. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Let's stop right there. No, you can't just say that and then go to my question to you. All right, let's, let's back that up. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's come on back. <sighs> okay. You dated a black. What college did you go to? I went to uh, Philadelphia College of Textile and Science. It's called now uh, Jefferson University, I think. They, it changed. But I went to Philadelphia. And you dated a black girl? Yeah, I was, you know, I'm, I'm an immigrant, uh, just came into the United States. I'm from Syria. I'm an Arab. Uh, wait, wait, slow down. Was she an immigrant too? Was she a non-foundational black American? Where, was she from the No, she was, she, was, she was a black American. Okay. And you said the brothers, the black men had a problem with that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that there was an issue with racism at all. I, 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 had... I don't believe you, sir. I don't believe that. Brothers don't have a problem with non-white dudes dating sisters. They wouldn't have a problem with you. They'd probably look at her funny style, but they wouldn't have a problem. No, no, I, I didn't say they had a problem. Don't don't take it that you know serious. Nobody had a serious problem. Nobody prevented me from dating her or going out with her. But I remember, like, uh, suddenly they all kind of came around me. I was like, hey, you know, what's going on? You're dating this girl. You know, I was like, why? Why is that important? But, you know, that was it. But I mean, it was it was noticeable. It was something to me. I didn't think it was anything uh, important, but that was my first experience. Is like, oh, so if I date a black woman, it's an issue. Um, oh, but, no, it's not an issue. You you you're framing the word as issue. We really don't have an issue with that. We, we're not really tripping on that. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, but go ahead now. Go ahead. No, I, I, I didn't say you're tripping on that. I said that's my first experience with the idea that there is a there is a distinction between the different races or different colors. That was it. Nothing. It was nothing serious. But my question to you is that I've been following you for a while, and I understand you're a Muslim, and I'm. And I'm not though. I'm not. I'm non-denominational. I'm not a Muslim. But go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, regardless, uh, um, I really find you, and don't take this the wrong way, I find you a little bit racist towards white people. Like, I'm a white person, but I don't have a problem with, with black people. But there is a difference in culture. And there's a Okay, slow down. How am I racist towards white people? Go ahead. Yeah, it's really hard to pin pinpoint it, but well, that means you just told something that was untrue. If you can't pinpoint it, if you say something, you should be able to stand on it, sir. And you said something that you couldn't stand on, which is technically a lie. So why did you tell a lie like that, sir? That's a very blatant and bold lie. It, it's it's my perception. Maybe my perception is wrong. I don't mean to lie, but I I'm. That's the perception that I got from you. Either you can prove that or not prove it. It's not a perception. Either you can show proof or you can't. If you can't, it's a lie. Lies are not perceptive. Lies are just lies. Well, my perception is that you have a problem with white people. Why do you think that? And what gives you that impression? The way you address white people, when you when you separate people from white and black, you you already have you're you're the one who separate. I mean, I can stop. I didn't create a system called white supremacy. I didn't do that, sir. How did I separate people? And we're already in a system of white supremacy. I, I'm from the Middle East. The same system oppressed me, and I'm white. And, and now they browbeat you into accepting a de facto white status and you're not Anglo. So you still don't get all the benefits of white supremacy, but you get the title and the status. So they've defeated you in a certain sense, sir. How, would they, how did they defeat me? I don't feel defeated. White, in order to be white, you have to give up your ethnic 
outside in order to be accepted into whiteness, especially if you're a Middle Eastern, sir? I, I don't have an ethnic side. I mean, I don't. I don't. Pr- no, you don't. I know you don't. You don't have it no more. That's what we. That's what being white is. You got to give up all of those other ethnicities. No, my my ethnicity is Muslim. I identify mus- myself by Muslim. I'm I'm the one who. That's a religion, sir. That's not an ethnicity. There's black Muslims, dark Muslims, white Muslims, sir. That's that's my identity. I I put my identity. You don't put my identity on me. You don't put. No, sir, a Muslim is not an ethnicity, nor is it a race. And that's universal. There is nothing called ethnicity in my book. Of course there is. Why now, would there? Now your ethnicity is white. You look at yourself as ethnically white now. No, I don't. But you repeatedly said that you're white. So I said I'm accepted by white. You have repeatedly said that you are white. You said, I am white. You said it about three or four times on here, sir. Sir, when I came to America, I had no idea what I am. When I came to America, I I found out that I am white. I, I don't know what I am because in my country, pretty much we're all the same. Okay. And the reason why you had to flee from your country is because of white supremacy. Do you acknowledge that? No, it wasn't because white supremacy. It was because oh. of the Jews. Because and of they're what? not white. Because of who? The Jews, and they're not white. Okay. The Israelis. The Israelis made you flee your country, sir? Well, the Israelis created a lot of problems in the Middle East. That's why I, I, I left. So the Israelis are over there with the rockets and the bombs and all that stuff? No, not the rockets and the bombs. Just, just destabilizing the area and the economies. And I mean, Syria is, has a piece of land occupied by um, um, Israel, and, and there was a war between them before I was born. I mean, you know, it's a pit. It's a, it's a pit, the Middle East. Who wants to live there? Uh-huh. Well, it's the white supremacists causing that conflict, sir. I don't think it's the white supremacists. The Jews are not the white. The Jews are just like me. They're, they look a little bit white, but they're not. Well, what's the difference between them and you? Nothing. We, we believe in different exactly. things. Exactly. Nothing. There's no such thing as a different ethnicity within suspected... Uh, the Jews are white? You, be, you believe the Jews are white? Um, sir? Because the whites don't accept the Jews. Uh, sir, There's certain whites don't accept other whites until they get around black people. And everybody gets on code. Just because there's different ethnic infighting among white people, that but means... I st- that means nothing because when a black person shows up, all of those ethnic groups get on code against the black people. So that's the I saw the thing. same thing. I saw the same thing in so slow down, slow down. See, they, they try to play this game here. I don't care about the infighting. Just like Ben Shapiro talks about how the alt right people don't like him. Ben Shapiro is an anti black racist. Just like the alt-right, they're anti-black racist. I don't care about the bickering and the infighting they do among each other. When we come around, y'all all get on code with anti-blackness. Right? Mm-hmm. Hello? Okay, you want to turn your microphone on, buddy? Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I, I wasn't able to. Um Again, again, uh, as as a Muslim, I cannot see colors. It's pre- it prevents me this this ideology that I. Okay, now when you just start lying like that, you tapped out. Now you're just lying and talking in circles. Okay. Yeah, when you gotta lie, you say something, and then a few sentences later, you act like you didn't say it. That means you tapped out. All right. Not going to let you just lie incessantly here. All right. Let me get one more call here. Because I've been on here a long time. Raise your hand if you want to get on. 
Raise your hand if you want to get on. Okay, my dog's is snoring. And by the way, y'all, a lot of folks in here, if you don't have my book, Foundational Black American Race Bader, you can get that book now at Amazon. Get the book right now at Amazon.com. Okay. Um, let's get this person, um, Nun, whatever your name is, let's get you on here. NJN, I think that's your name. I don't know what your name is. All right, NJN. All right, NJN, let's try it. All right, raise your hand. NJN, is his microphone ain't working. Let me get one more. All right, let's get um, let's get Count Atula. We'll get Count Atula. Count Atula, hop on, man. All right, Count. All right, turn your microphone on, Count. Hello, good um, morning from my side. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but this morning. Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm in Nigeria, Kwaibum State. There you go. What's on your mind, man? Um, so I kind of been hearing a lot about you and your perspective and what the FBA is really about. Well, I've been hearing right. what people think the FBA is about. Um, a lot of mostly indigenous Africans feel that there's a sort of misrepresentation that the FBA presents. Now, I believe in being objective, right? So I think maybe some things people hear about FBA is probably unfounded or the disagreements have devolved into arguments that don't make any sense. So I'd like to properly understand what it's about so far from the conversation I heard between you and the last person. I'm not quite sure if he knows how properly to articulate the things he's trying to say. So I'm trying to get into what, first of all, FBA is really about, the perspective of someone that identifies as part of that group. And generally, I'm trying to get what it's about. Now, what do you think FBA is? Because all of us, we've explained it many times. But what do you think FBA is? Okay. Looking from the outside in with the people I've engaged, FBA generally is something or an organization that black people in diaspora, because that's how I look at them. Oh, people well, stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. Right there. It's not an organization. We got that? I'm listening. All right, let's try it again. What do you think FBA is? I just told you it wasn't an organization. Now, from what I just told you, what do you think FBA is? If FBA is not an organization, it's probably going to be a movement. Okay. So. Okay, now what do you think it is now? Just what do you think it is? Okay, first things first. I want to get this straight. Are you trying to educate me or are you are trying to get what I think it is to educate me? What exactly because is the goal here? I want to see if the education is in good faith. Because sometimes people ask a question in bad faith. They're not really trying to get educated. Because no matter what I tell you, you're still going to reframe it into a certain narrative anyway. And then it gets into basically time wasting so I let's see. just so i just want to make sure we're going to get to the chase because a lot of times people come in and they have bad faith arguments it's really passive aggressive and I, I have to question that because whenever people come in and say they don't know what fba is i'm pretty sure they know what it is if you've been because okay. we've been pretty clear even tonight i've explained it multiple times so the fact that you are saying that you don't know what it is after I've explained it multiple times, and you've been here long enough, it gives me the mm, No. It, I got it, here like 10 minutes in. Okay. So that said, I understand it, what you're saying. Okay, but if you you're heard trying to avoid you, a situation where it's problematic, oh, where I'm coming at you combatant. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I just want to make sure, because when you said it's a group, that's all. You're already framing it incorrectly. That is true. 
Right. In fact, I stand to be corrected on any notions I have, which is why I came in with the begin. I came in at the top with I don't know. The aim here is to understand. Now, I don't know means there's probably a picture or a, or a representation of and, it. I and, and the problem is people come in again with, with fake concern and like, I don't know, I want to be educated. And then when you break it down and then it turns into, it sounds like you hate Africans. And then it gets into some trolling. <laughs> I then, feel you. And when it goes there, now it's basically attention. It's a too much, yeah. I feel you. And, and I, I'm okay. not anybody no no attention. If they want attention, call nine seven six um boobs or something. But foundational black Americans, very simple. It's a lineage. If that's all it is. A lineage. A lineage a in what sense? Black Are you guys trying people, to establish ancestry or not what exactly to establish is it? anything? We've already been established as a distinct group. We are the okay. non- on this land. We're the only group who are non-immigrants. That's what a foundational black American is. Non-immigrants in America. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, well, that is pretty succinct and straight to the point. That right. makes sense. Right. All right. Um, Th- thank you then, so much. All right. That's enough. Okay. Yeah, people ain't that naive. They know what it is. We're non-immigrants. We're not trying to establish anything. We're not a group. We're lineage. If you are non-immigrant, you're FBA. We are the only non-immigrant group here in North America. Every other group immigrated here. We did not. That's in a nutshell. That's what FBA is in a nutshell. All right. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here. because I've been on here for four hours almost talking to y'all, man. Glad to have y'all tuning in. I always say I'm going to be on here for a short period of time, and then I stay on here all night and all that. And I got, damn, it's almost 2 o'clock in the morning out here in L.A. But anyway, man, you guys um, go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, and subscribe to my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. And also, uh, 